How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with his death, shield and that came, part 1. Huge shout out to Outcast Fur for this story. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Naruto. Please bring peace to our world. The bloody raven haired boy said to the bright blonde boy. Sasuke. The blonde said sadly, as a tear went down the side of his face. The artificial dimension slowly began to collapse around the two. I'm already dead. We've already undone the infinite Tsukuyumi. Our world should be safe. That women will never return. Now go. Sasuke yelled to the blonde with the last of his strength. The blonde was hesitate for a second, and then he reluctantly nodded his head. Naruto started to run towards the open portal Fae led back to their dimension. As the blonde ran, the entire dimension began to collapse around him, and more portals could be seen opening at random. Naruto hurry. A pink-haired girl called from a far-off portal. I'm almost there. Naruto shouted, as he picked up speed. The dimension was now quickly dissipating, and even more portals were opening up all around the blonde. Naruto look out. Sakura called out, as a portal appeared under the blonde's feet, leaving him no time to react. The blonde muttered under his breath as he began to fall through. Luckily he barely grabbed the edge of the portal with his hand. Naruto. Sakura yelled, as she ran to the edge of the portal trying to help the blonde up. Sakura I can't hold on. My chakra it's gone. Leave me. Naruto told his friend, as his grip loosened in her hands. I can't do that. I've already lost one teammate I won't lose another. Sakura said trying to pull the blonde up. Please Sakura pass on me, and Sasuke's wishes to the world. Naruto said looking up at the girl. No. Sakura said. Knowing well what the Jinchuriki was about to do. Please bring peace. I'm entrusting this to you. Naruto said, with a sad smile. Naruto don't. Sakura shouted, as he finally lost his grip. Goodbye. Naruto said, as he fell through the portal. No. Sakura screamed, trying to reach down, and catch him. Naruto was quickly sucked into another dimension, that was opened by the rabbit princess. At first everything was black, and nothing could be heard. Naruto oddly felt at peace. The blonde had been fighting a terribly long war for the past week LT had relieved him to finally have a moment of silence. Suddenly the quietness got to him, and the blonde's facial expression changed. This is so boring. Naruto shouted. The shinobi was about to say something else, but suddenly a bright light appeared under him. A second later he was falling through a bright blue sky. This is gonna hurt. He sighed approaching the snow-covered ground. Ow. My head. Naruto said coming too, and realizing he was not covered in snow, but instead in a nice warm bed. The blonde quickly felt for Kurama presence. He was greeted by a small grumble. Yeah he's okay. The blonde thought to himself. The shinobi quickly looked around to see that he was in a small cabin. Ah I see you're awake my boy. A voice said. Naruto spun his head to see a small old man, with a short beard, and blue eyes that were covered by glasses. What? Where? Who are you? Where am I? Naruto asked looking at the man trying to get out of bed, but then quickly winced from a sharp pain in his side. You're in the northern tribes my boy. Far north of the empire. I am simply an old man, who found you unconscious outside in the snow. Also be careful you're still injured. The man said with a smile, as he cleaned an end table next to Naruto bed. The man picked a picture frame to reveal a small girl in the picture. Northern tribe. Empire. Naruto asked looking over to the man. He had never heard of any of these places. Yes. The great empire to the south that has existed for over a thousand years. Now if I may who are you my boy? The old man asked walking over to the side of the bed. Oh me. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. 
Shinobi from the Leaf Village. How long was I out? Naruto asked. About two days. I've never heard of that village and a shinobi. The old man said walking away from the bed and over to a fireplace. Yes we're amazing warriors. That can use the power of chakra. Naruto said with a large smile. Oh I see. Well we might need some shinobi soon then. The old man laughed as he warmed up by the fireplace. What do you mean? Naruto asked, slightly confused. The Imperial Army is invading the Northern Tribes. The old man said with a grim face. What? Naruto asked. The old man was about to answer, but was interrupted by a loud banging at the door. The old man slowly waked over to the door, and slowly opened it. Not even a second later two men barged into the cabin, knocking the man onto the floor. What can I do for you fine imperial soldiers today? The old man asked struggling to get up. Save it. General Esteth ordered us investigate this house. One of the soldiers said, as he walked into the room, and immediately spotted Naruto. Who are you? The soldier yelled, as he pointed his rifle at the blonde. Ah, uh, my Naruto, and I have no idea what's going on. Naruto said putting both his hands up in the air. You stay there. Private searched the house. The soldier ordered the other man. Understood sir. The man said saluting, and walking into a back room. You could soon hear crashes from furniture, and other objects. Naruto soon realized that one was an officer, and the other was a simple soldier. Now hey you just can't go looking through my things. The old man said, as he approached the officer. Shut it. The man yelled hitting the old man with the butt of his gun. Striking the old man down. Naruto temper quickly rose. He didn't like when people treated others like dirt. Naruto quickly spotted his weapons pouch on the end table. He was about to get up, when suddenly the other soldier came back from the back room with what looked like a few pieces of paper in his hands. I found these sir. The soldier said quickly holding up a piece of paper. That had a drawing of a woman on it. It read wanted dead or alive, night raid, I came. Well, well. We have a night raid sympathizer here. Kill him. The officer said, taking the paper, and beginning to walk out the door. Now wait. The old man said trying to reach for the man, as he left. Get down now. The other soldier yelled. Pointing the gun at the man's face. Please I beg of you don't do this. My granddaughter will be back soon. Can you at least let me say goodbye? The old man pleaded. Down now. The soldier said, knocking the man down onto the ground. Naruto tried to reach for his weapon's pouch, but the sharp pain every few seconds in his side made it difficult. Grandpa. A voice yelled from the door. Not a second later a small little girl came running through the door, and bumped into the officer as he was leaving the cabin. The little girl had long flowing black hair, with what looked like ear-like flaps of hair on each side. She had big bright blue eyes, and was wearing a small jacket with a red scarf around her neck. She couldn't have been no more than six or seven. No Yukari run. The old man screamed at what appeared to be his granddaughter. Huh? The little girl asked, looking up at the soldier with a confused expression. The officer had a sadistic expression on his face, as he graped the girl, and threw her into the house. She thankfully landed softly onto Naruto's bed. The blonde however was trying desperately to reach his weapon's pouch. Suddenly a gunshot was heard in the room, and the old man dropped down on the ground dead. Naruto froze at the sight. He had just witnessed a defenseless civilian murdered in cold blood. This enraged the blonde. Grandpa. The little asked looking up from the bed to see her grandfather with a huge hole in his chest. Now for you. You little fish. The soldier said with a laugh pointing the rifle at her. No. The little girl screamed, as she closed her eyes. Die. The soldier yelled, as he fired his gun. The shot echoed across the room. But the bullet never reached the little girl. 
The soldier however fell over dead. Ha! Huh? Asked the little girl, opening her eyes. They quickly widened in shock. The blonde man that her grandpa had saved had blocked the bullet for her. But not only that, there was another one of him standing over the soldier. What? The officer yelled, turning around looking over at the blonde. I will not allow you to kill another person. Naruto shouted, raising a kunai in the little girl's defense. Why you little prick? I'll show you what happens when you strike down an imperial soldier. Die. The officer screamed firing his gun rapidly at the shinobi. Naruto quickly dispersed his clone guard in Yukari, and used a kunai to cut all the bullets in two. The officer ran out of ammo, and began reloading his gun. It was suddenly knocked out of his hand by a kunai. The officer looked up at Naruto. Stand down now. Naruto shouted, as he raised his kunai. The officer started to rummage through his pocket. He suddenly felt something, and smirked. Fuck you. The officer said in response, as he raised what looked like a large ball. The man suddenly pressed a button on it, and it started to deep. What? Naruto asked looking, confused. A second later realization hit him like a train. Time to die punk. The officer said, as he was about to throw the bomb. Naruto quickly sprinted towards the man, and kicked him in his stomach with enough force to rupture it. The officer was sent flying out of the cabin, and into the forest. Not even a half a second later a massive explosion went off in the woods. Now that, that's dealt with. Naruto said breathing out a sigh of relief, that was short-lived. Grandpa. The little cried, as she ran over to the man on the floor. He was bleeding badly from the wound. Yukari I'm sorry. Looks like this is the end for grandpa. The old man said smiling over at his granddaughter. Hang on old man. I can help. Naruto said reaching his arm out towards him. But was stopped by the man. No don't. I've lost too much blood. I'll be dead in a minute. The man said, as blood started to flow out the side of his mouth. But. Naruto began but was quickly stopped by the man. It's fine, but I will ask you for a favor. Since I did save your life. Asked the old man. Yeah sure anything. Naruto said with a neutral expression. Take care of Yukari please. I was the last family she had. Now she'll have no one. The old man said, as he began to cough violently. Yeah sure old man you can count on me. Naruto said with a sad smile. Grandpa. The little girl known as Yukari cried out. Now Yukari. Naruto will be watching out for you. You've told me how much you liked him when I brought him here. The old man said, as he began to cough blood up. Grandpa you can't die. Yukari cried out, with streams of tears beginning to flow out of her eyes. Don't cry Yukari. I'll be watching over you from above. The old man said. Ah really? Yukari asked, wiping the tears away. Yes. Please remember to be good for Mr. Naruto, and remember I'll always be here. He said pointing to her heart. Oh. Okay grandpa. Sniffed the little girl. Now go wait outside for Naruto. I have to have a word with him. He told the little girl. The girl reluctantly nodded her head, and slowly walked out the door. Please take care of her. Protect her with your life. The old man said, as his expression changed to a serious one. Don't worry old man she's in good hands. But where are we supposed to go? Naruto asked. Go to the capital city. The rebellion could use you. Night raid could use you. He answered to the blonde. Night raid? Naruto asked looking over to the scattered posters on the floor. Yes the people on those posters. The man said, cough more violently now they'll help you. He added with a smile. Thanks. For everything. Naruto said, with a saddened expression. Don't mention it. Now go. Take care of her please. The old man said, as his eyes began to close. 
Naruto slowly got up from his spot, and walked up to the cabin doorway that lead outside. He stopped and looked back at him. I give you my word. That I will protect her with my life. He said, as he walked off. Good luck Naruto. The old man said, as his vision began to get blurry, and a moment later everything went black. Naruto slowly walked outside, and turned to see Yukari wiping away some tears. She quickly looked up to him with hope in her eyes. Grandpa? Yukari asked looking up to him. I'm sorry but he's gone. Naruto said kneeling down in front of her. She looked down again, and was about to cry until she felt two arms go around her. I'm sorry. Naruto said, as he tightly hugged the little girl. I know how it feels to be alone. But you have me, and I promise I'll protect you. He added with a heartwarming smile. She couldn't hold back her tears anymore, and began crying into the blonde's shoulder. The two remained like this for about five minutes, before the little girl had worn herself out. She had fallen asleep on the blonde. Naruto chuckled at this, but then suddenly his nose caught a scent of a familiar smell. The smell of gunpowder, and metal. More of them. Naruto said narrowing his eyes, and looking in the direction they were coming from. All from the east. He thought, looking into the dense forest. Naruto quickly created four clones, and placed Yukari on his back. He began to run through the trees with the four clones guarding him in a diamond formation. Hey boss where are we going? The clone on his right asked him. I've picked up a scent of a town nearby. The clone directly in front said. Good then we'll head there. Come on everyone. The real Naruto said. Five minutes later. What the hell happened here? One of Naruto's clones asked, as the group looked over the hillside at the town. It had looked like it was attacked by some sort of freakish ice storm. The entire place was completely destroyed. The town. Another clone said. Who would do such a thing? The third clone asked. All the clones looked to the real Naruto who was standing in front of all of them. What do you want to do? One of them asked, moving up to the original. Here you two. Take care of Yukari till we get back. The real Naruto said, as he hand the sleeping Yukari over to one of his clones. You can count on us boss. The clone said saluting to him. Let's move. Naruto said to the other copies of himself. They both nodded back at him. All of them took off sprinting down the hill, and in no time they were inside the town. This is impressive. One of the clones said, as he admired a large ice pillars sticking out of the ground. Look for survivors. Naruto ordered his clones. Understood. They both said, as they ran farther into the village. The group started rummaging through buildings, and piles of debris. Anything. Naruto called out. No. One of the clones responded. What about you? Hey. Naruto shouted to the other clone. But there was no response. Uh boss you might want to come over here. The clone finally shouted out from a street over. What is it? Naruto wasn't able to finish his sentence, as his eyes widened in horror. Oh my god. The other clone said, as it stood next to Naruto. Hundreds of bodies littered the center of town. Men women, and children alike all dead. They were all thrown carelessly into a large pile in the middle of town. What the hell is going on here? One of the clones said. Who would do this? The other said, looking around at all the bodies. Quick see if anyone's still alive. Naruto said trying to hold back his emotions. Boss they're all dead. One of the clones said, as it turned around. It was in sage mode to confirm it. Naruto also quickly entered sage mode to confirm it for himself. Damn it. The blonde shouted out, as he kneeled down, and punched the ground. He quickly formed a hand sign, and his two clones quickly disappeared. He kept the other two safely guarding Yukari. When I find whoever did this. I'll make them pay. Naruto said smacking both of his fists together in anger. 
The blonde began walking through the village until he found another square. He began to look around, before he sensed something in sage mode. A second later he heard footsteps, and yelling. Hey come on. A voice suddenly yelled, it was coming from the far side of town. I heard a voice coming from this way. Another yelled. Naruto quickly realized that these were the people that were chasing them. They finally caught up with me. Well I suppose I couldn't run from them forever. Naruto said sighing, as he patiently stood in the center of town waiting for his pursuers. Not even a minute later a small group of soldiers entered the square, and surrounded Naruto. They all pointed their rifles at the smirking blonde. Stand still as death would like a word with you. The soldier directly in front of him stated. Is death? Who's that? Naruto asked, looking confused, and putting both his hands up. Our general. She is the greatest warrior in the entire empire. Another soldier said. We'll see about that. Naruto said, as he sat on the ground, and patiently waited for this as death. Twenty minutes later. Hey! Naruto shouted at one of the soldier from his sitting position. What? The soldier yelled back at the blonde. When's she going to show up? Naruto asked, clearly annoyed, as he had been sitting for what seemed like an eternity. You will not rush the greatest death. The soldier yelled back. Hey boss. A clone suddenly yelled out from across the street. All the soldier pointed their rifles at the clone, and they were all extremely confused at the sight. What? Naruto shouted out. You okay? The clone yelled back. Yeah I'm just perfect. I'm not captured by the enemy or anything. Naruto shouted out with a hint of anger. Oh. Need some help? The clone asked, rubbing the back of its neck, and awkwardly laughing. Naruto just sighed, he realized he acted like that all the time, so he couldn't really say anything no. Just bring Yukari down here. He yelled out to his clone. You got it. The clone said. It quickly turned around, and ran back towards the large hill. Five minutes later. What? How? A soldier asked raising his rifle awkwardly. There were now two other copies of the blonde. One of the copies had a small girl on its back. Is she awake yet? The original Naruto asked, as the clone handed him Yukari. No boss she's been sleeping. The clone said with a smile. Good. You two are dismissed. Naruto said. The two clones quickly nodded, and disappeared into thin air shocking all of the soldier. Naruto put Yukari on his back, where she instantly latched onto his neck. How the hell did you do that? The soldier in front of him yelled. Do what? Naruto asked looking around confused. The clone thing. He yelled back. You'll see soon. Now is this is death coming or not? If she isn't then I'll be on my way. Naruto said, as he was beginning to walk away from the soldier. Hey wait. The soldier shouted, raising his gun at the blonde. The gun suddenly froze over, and the soldier's eyes suddenly filled with fear. Now now captain let's not be too hasty. A woman said, as she walked up to the captain of the group. This woman was tall, beautiful and slender with long light blue hair and blue eyes. She wore a general's apparel with long sleeves, a blue scarf on her neck, and high-heeled boots. Though the most strangest thing about her was the odd tattoo on her chest. General is death. Ma'am I didn't see you there. The captain said nervously. No matter. Why have you called me out here? Is death asked looking at him with an ice-cold expression. We've located the person responsible for killing our two scouts. The captain said saluting to her. Oh, and who might that be? Is death asked, but was quickly silenced by the sound of Yukari, as she woke up. Naruto. Yukari asked looking at him sleepily. Yes. I'm here. Naruto said looking back at her. What's going on where are we? She asked looking, around, and seeing all the men surrounding them. She quickly began to get frightened. 
She hugged Naruto tighter. We're on our way to the capital right now. We'll be there soon I promise. Naruto said to her with a heartwarming smile. The girl's expression instantly changed, and she smiled back. Okay. His death heart nearly stopped at the sight of the blonde, and his smile. She felt a weird sensation in her chest, and her cheeks felt warm. She had to know this man's name. You state your name. His death called out, as she walked up to the blonde. Naruto who are those people? Yukari asked, as his death approached the two. Just sit tight here Yukari. We'll leave in a second. Naruto said with a smile. Oh okay. Yukari stuttered. Naruto gave her another reassuring smile, and turned his head back to his death who had now stood in front of him. Even being as tall as his death was, the blonde was still taller than her. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. And you must be his death. Honestly I expected an old hag. Not a young beauty. Naruto said with an awkward laugh, as he rubbed the back of his neck. And he's charming. His death thought to herself. Now Naruto I must ask. Why did you kill my men? She asked. They had attacked innocent civilians, and threatened to kill Yukari. I can't let that stand. Naruto said, with determination quickly filling his face. This made his death as chest feel even stranger. Oh I see. Can I see this girl? His death asked, as she looked back behind Naruto to reveal Yukari. Yukari had hid her face in Naruto's back. His death laughed at this. My, my I am sorry about that. I only ordered them to capture people not kill them. But I'm afraid you two will have to come with me. His death said with a smile, as she moved closer to the blonde trying to intimidate him. And where's that exactly? Naruto asked moving forward not backing down from the women, and holding his ground. The the capital city of course. His death said looking up at the blonde, as she kept the smile of her face. For what? The blonde asked. Don't question it. Just come along. His death said as she poked him in the chest. Her expression instantly changed when she felt something from the touch of presence that felt like hers. You're like me. She stuttered to the blonde. What is this? Naruto asked confused, looking at his death, as she looked up to him with a softness in her blue eyes. He felt another presence inside of the women, something similar to a tailed beast. She couldn't be a Jinchuriki could she? The blonde asked himself in his conscious. Naruto. Kurama suddenly roared in the blonde's mind. Kurama. Naruto asked, mentally jumping at the fox's quick arrival. I sense something dark inside of her. It's not like a tailed beast, but something else I believe. Kurama told his Jinchuriki. Understood. I'll be careful. Naruto replied back to the Nine Tails. Good luck. Kurama said, as he closed their mental link. Is that your imperial arm? His death asked, looking up at him. Imperial arm? What's that? This is Kurama he's my tailed beast. Naruto said to the ice general. His death had no idea what Naruto was talking about. But there was one sure thing. He was much more powerful than her. She had never felt this intimidated in her life. Even when she had hunted ultra-class danger beasts, she hadn't felt this much power. I feel weak. She thought to herself, but she couldn't let the blonde see. Tailed beast? His death quickly asked. She had never heard of such a thing. Yes powerful, and honorable creation. Made by the legendary sage of Sixth Paths. Naruto told the women. I would like to know more about this. So please come back to the capital city with me. I'll only ask nicely once. His death said, leaning into the blonde. Naruto nervously chuckled, and a small blush appeared across his face. What do you think Yukari? I won't go anywhere without your say-so. He asked looking back at the little girl. You won't be able to make it out of the north without me. His death added. Naruto looked back to the girl for an answer. A second later she nodded her head confirming it. 
Naruto knew this person was an enemy, but if he safely wanted to get Yukari out of here he had to work with her. We'll go. The Jinchuriki said. Excellent. Men let's form up back at camp, and next we move to the capital. Isdeath called out to her soldiers. This caused all the men to cheer, and jump for joy. Yukari poked Naruto in the neck, and the blonde turned back to her. Naruto, are we going to be okay? Yukari asked looking at him with her big blue eyes. Don't worry Yukari, I'll protect you no matter what. Naruto said with a heartwarming, and reassuring smile. The girl quickly smiled back, and rested her head on his back. Little did the blonde know that his death was watching the entire thing. Naruto looked forward to see the Ice Queen smiling at him. A small blush appeared on the blonde's face. General Esteth has returned. A young man shouted out, as Esteth, and her group entered the clearing. Naruto quickly scanned the encampment. It was fairly large. It spanned the entire clearing, ABD into the forest. Multiple campfires could be seen coming from various parts of the camp, and a large wooden wall surrounded the entire encampment. Our army is almost ready to depart general. An older man said, as he walked up to the women, and saluted. When will we be able to leave at the earliest? His death asked him. Tomorrow morning general. The man replied. Good. You may go back to your post, and the rest of you are dismissed. His death called out to all the soldiers surrounding Naruto, and Yukari. All the soldiers around them quickly dispersed into the camp. Yukari quickly jumped off of Naruto's back, and held on to the blonde's side. So what are we supposed to do? Yukari asked, tugging at Naruto's pants. The blonde quickly kneeled down next to her, he was about to answer, but his death quickly kneeled down next to him you'll be coming with me. She said with a smile. Yukari quickly retreated behind Naruto's back, much to his death annoyance. And where would that be? Naruto asked looking over to her, as they both got up. Back to my cabin. His death smiled. Will Yukari be safe there? Naruto asked. He wanted to make sure that he would be okay with this woman. Of course. His death said still smiling. Then let's go. Naruto said reluctantly. Yukari quickly grabbed his hand, as the three began to walk through camp. Ten minutes later. Naruto. Yukari suddenly asked, looking up at the blonde. The three had been walking through the camp for some time now. Something wrong Yukari? Naruto asked looking down at her. How much longer? I'm kinda tired. She yawned, and began to rub her eyes. We're almost there. His death said out of nowhere. We're almost there Yukari, but would you like for me to carry you? Naruto asked the little girl. Yes please. Yukari said looking up with tired eyes. Naruto quickly bent down, and offered the little girl his back for a bed. She quickly jumped on, and put her arms over his neck. The blonde quickly got up, and his eyes met with a smiling as death. What? Naruto asked nervously. You put that girl's needs before your own. Even though you're strong, and she's weak. His death said with a smile. The two quickly began to walk down through the encampment again. What's that have to do with anything? Naruto asked as they walked into the woods. I'll tell you when we're inside. His death said, turning back, and smirking at him. What? Naruto asked looking confused. We're here. His death said, as she pointed to a cabin not even twenty feet away from them. Ha! Huh. I expected like a palace not a cabin. Naruto said with a grin, and chuckle. Please my castle won't be done until next week. His death laughed, as they walked up to the door. Eh! Naruto yelled. He didn't think the blue-haired beauty was serious. Kidding. Now come on I have a bed she can lay in. His death said opening the door to the cabin. It was fairly well furnished. It had a main room, a restroom, and two branching off side rooms. You know for an enemy you're. Well you know. Not an enemy. Naruto said admiring the room, 
but quickly following his death as she moved to a side room. The general opened the door to reveal a very homey looking room, with one small window, and a fairly large bed. Place her here. She told the blonde, lifting up the covers. He gently took Yukari off his back, and placed her onto the bed. The two quietly walked out of the room, and into the main room you're a strong warrior I can tell. I have respect for people like you. Not people like her. His death said to the blonde, answering his question from earlier. What's that supposed to mean? Naruto asked raising his voice, but quickly silenced himself as to not wake Yukari. I'm simply stating I wouldn't have been as merciful to the little girl if I found her. His death said, as she closed the door to Yukari's room. The two were now standing alone in the living room. Why? Naruto asked looking at her angry, and confused. Because she's weak, and the world would have no use for her. I live by my father's words. The strong survive and the weak die as death said, with a smirk. The blonde simply put on a thinking pose, as the women sat down. That's stupid. Naruto suddenly blurted out. What? His death asked slightly stuttering. No one had ever counted her father's saying before. She believed it was a law she must always go by. But now she had this powerful man in front of her saying it was stupid. Yes. If you are strong then it's your duty to protect the weak. Naruto said smacking both his fists together. Says who? His death said, crossing her arms. Says me. The blonde shouted, startling his death, as she began to get nervous. If you believe that miss is death then you aren't really strong. You're weaker than anyone else in my book. Naruto said leaning against a wall. The blonde had just unknowingly challenged his death. I am strong. His death yelled back. She did not like being judged by this man. He had no idea what her life was like when she was young. Then prove to me you are. Naruto shouted back, at the blue-haired beauty. Fine. Why schnabel? She screamed, as she launched several icicles at Naruto. The blonde instantly entered sage mode, and held his hand up at the approaching icicles. All the approaching icicles instantly broke apart, as they hit the blonde's hand. His death eyes widened in shock, and surprise. Her mind quickly filled with different types of emotions. A small amount of anger, but there was another unidentifiable emotion she couldn't wrap her head around. Could this be some sort of affection? She asked herself, as she looked over to Naruto. The blonde quickly got into a fighting stance, and determination quickly flashed through his eyes. It's definitely affection. She said to herself, as a blush appeared across her face. She wanted this man. If that's how it's going. Then show me that we're worthy of each other. His death blurted out, as the blush remained on her face. What? Naruto suddenly asked confused. His death quickly moved her fist with superhuman speed towards the blonde's face, but Naruto matched it with two times the speed. Their fists smashed together creating a small shockwave in the room. His death was pushed back a few feet, as well as Naruto. She looked at Naruto, with an unknown desire, and charged the Jinchuriki. The two quickly began exchanging fists. This went on for about 30 seconds, until Naruto landed a good punch on the women's left cheek, and she has landed a kick on his right leg. Impressive. His death said, as she breathed heavily. She was not prepared to fight like this against someone so powerful. You're not too bad yourself. Naruto said with a grin, as he stood perfectly fine, not even limping the slightest. His death smirked, and began to rush towards the blonde with her rapier aimed at the boy. Naruto quickly took out a kunai, and blocked his death rapier. His death please stop. Naruto said looking into her eyes. This caused the women to lose focus for a moment, and Naruto knocked the rapier out of her hands. It's over. Naruto said, as he raised his kunai up to her. Not yet. His death shouted, as she instantly created a sword out of ice. She moved the blade in a stabbing motion at Naruto, but the blonde was quick to counter. A yellow ball of energy, formed in his hands. 
The ball pulsated, and glowed. It reminded her of the sun. She was completely mesmerized by it that she didn't notice it approaching her sword. Raisin Naruto yelled, as he slammed the Raisin Gan into his death sword immediately melting it, as it passed through, and hitting the general sending her flying across the room. His death landed roughly, as she hit the far wall with a loud thud, and almost broke it on impact. The woman was lost for a second until she felt a burning sensation on her right side. His death looked down to see a large red gash in her side. Blood was quickly flowing out of it. She looked back at the blonde to see him approaching her. Finish me. His death said, as she struggled to get up. She knew she was no match for this man. He took her out with one attack. Her the strongest general in the empire was defeated, by this mysterious man. The blonde walked closer, and closer to her, as she prepared for the end. Here. Naruto said, as he outstretched his hand to hers. What? His death asked confused, but took the man's hand, and was helped up. You're bleeding internally. I'll help you. Naruto said, as he suddenly picked her up bridal style. The general was surprised by this as a small blush appeared across her face. What are you doing? She asked, as he walked her over to the couch in the center of the room. The blonde quickly laid her down, and lifted up her jacket to examine the wound. Helping you. What's it look like? Naruto asked, as he continued to examine the wound. You're not going kill me. His death asked, looking at the blonde with a confused expression. Naruto simply sighed, and kept looking at the wound. His death just kept staring at him, much to his own annoyance. Why would I do that? He asked, looking up at her. Because you're stronger than me. His death simply said. That doesn't matter. Here stop talking you'll tire yourself out like that. Naruto told the blue-haired general. His death listened to the blonde, and remained quiet as he worked on her side. Shosen Jutsu. The blonde whispered, as his hands began to glow green, and his death felt an instant relief to her wound. What's that? His death asked, looking down at Naruto's hands. She was amazed at what this man could do. This is a healing justu. I'm completely healing your wounded. Naruto said looking up at her with a wide grin. This caused a small blush to appear across the blue-haired general's face. Is that part of your tailed beast? His death asked, looking up at him from her position on the couch. No this is chakra. It's the life energy that runs through all living things where I come from. It also enables the user to create justu. Naruto explained to her. Justu? She asked, a bit confused. Like the raisin gan I used. Naruto said, as he walked over to the end of the couch, and sat down. Oh you mean the ball of fire thing? His death asked, as she quickly remembered the orange ball-like thing that struck her side. This is going to take a while. Naruto sighed, as he leaned back on the couch. Thirty minutes later. I think I'm starting to understand. You focus this chakra heavily, and release it outside your body to create a justu? His death said, as she finally sat up right on the couch. That's correct. Naruto said rubbing the back of his head. That's an extraordinary gift. How do I obtain such a thing? His death asked, with a grin. If she could posse such a powerful ability she wanted to know how to obtain it. You're not able to. I've already looked at you with my sage mode, and you posse's no chakra coils at all. Naruto said, shaking his head. What about my demon extract? His death asked, moving closer to Naruto. What's that? Naruto asked. It is my taigu. His death said, as she pointed to the strange marking on her chest. What is that? Naruto asked, as he moved towards her, and moved out to touch the mark. They're extraordinary weapons created by the first emperor of our empire. They are made from ultra-class danger beasts. His death told the man. Naruto had no idea what those were. Danger beasts? The blonde finally asked. Powerful monsters that roam the lands. They are almost impossible to defeat. 
Isteth said, as she pointed to her mark. Ha! Naruto chuckled, tilting his head back. I'd love to fight one of those things. They aren't as easy to defeat as you think. Isteth said with a deadly smirk. We'll see about that. Naruto chuckled. Isteth began to get off the couch, and suddenly gripped her right side in pain. Naruto instantly moved over to her. Are you okay? You'll be sore for a while, but you won't have any pain. He said, as he helped her up. I'm fine. This is nothing. I've been through worse. Isteth said. Little did the blonde know, that her demon extract wasn't responding to kindly to Naruto's chakra. Well you should probably get some rest soon. It is getting late. Naruto said, looking out the window, watching the sun slowly set behind a mountain. What about you? Shouldn't you be getting some rest too? Isteth asked looking over to him, as she moved closer to her room's door. I'm fine. I've had enough rest these past few days. I'll stay awake a little longer. Naruto said, as he went back to sitting on the couch. Then I'll stay here too. Isteth said, as she slowly made her way back to the couch. I would like to hear more about your world, and adventures. She said, as she sat down next to the Jinchuriki. Naruto paused for a moment. I don't know. He said, as he looked over to Yukari's room. He knew if he stayed up the girl would be completely fine. Come on I bet you have some interesting stories. Isteth said leaning towards the shinobi. A blush appeared across Naruto's face, and he began to get nervous. Suddenly an image of Niji getting uppercut flashed across the blonde's mind, and the expression turned into a smirk. Well this one time. The blonde began, as his death leaned back on the couch with a smile. Naruto. Naruto. Naruto wake up. A voice called out to the passed out blonde on the couch. His eyes slowly fluttered to life, he saw Yukari on her knees, with a familiar orange object in her hands. Huh, what? Kid help me. The orange object in her arms shouted out. Naruto looked down to see a very small version of Kurama. He looked like how he did when he was first created, except he was a lot smaller, about the size of a dog. Kurama. Why are you? Naruto began but was quickly stopped as the fox put his paw up. It's a long story, and now this little brat won't leave me alone. The Nine Tails said, looking up at a smiling Yukari. Naruto he's so cute can I keep him? Yukari said with the sweetest smile. Naruto couldn't resist that smile, and also Kurama deserved some punishment. You can keep him, as long as you want to Yukari. Naruto said with smirk, Kurama's eyes widened in horror, and then filled with anger. Why you little brat? I knew I should have eaten you when I had the chance. Kurama barked, he was about to lunge for the boy, but then stopped when he felt the most gentle touch on his back. The tailed beast turned back to see Yukari gently petting his back. She looked up with her soft blue eyes, and smiled. It's okay I won't be mean. On second thought this might not be so bad. The fox jumped out of her arms, and onto the floor. Yukari quickly followed, as started to scratch him behind the ear. Naruto smiled at this, at least the girl was having fun. The blonde finally noticed that his death was missing, he began to look around, but couldn't find her. Um hey where's his death? She stepped out for a bit boss. A clone said, as he leaned against the wood. Naruto had completely forgotten he had made it to watch over Yukari during the night. Naruto didn't trust his death one bit, when it came to Yukari. All right then. I need you to watch Yukari for a moment. While I have a discussion with the furball. He said pointing to the fox who was currently on his back with his tongue hanging out, as Yukari rubbed his stomach. No problem boss. The clone nodded as he went over to Yukari. Let's go Kurama. Naruto said calling the fox over to him. The nine tails responded with a grumble, getting off his back. He liked being pet. Naruto walked into the room he placed Yukari in the night before, and reactivated the privacy seal he half placed on the room last night so Yukari wouldn't be disturbed. 
Kurama quickly scurried in, right before Naruto shut the door. So what's this about? He asked leaping onto the net. What the hell happened yesterday? He said, as he leaned against the far wall staring at the fox. What do you mean? The nine tails asked, tilting his head. The old man. Why couldn't I save him? Naruto clenched his fist in frustration. Why couldn't he save you Kari's grandfather? You, and I both know, that you were still recovering from the battle. Kurama said, laying his head down on the bed. But that doesn't explain why I couldn't even move Kurama. Naruto yelled out in anger. He didn't want anyone else to die, especially if he could have done something. Hey kid calm down. Do you know how far you fell, and the damage you took from the battle? You literally fell from a height of five miles, I did everything I could to keep you alive. So how about you take a chill pill? Yes the old man died it is truly a shame, but at least you saved the little brat. Kurama explained to the boy. You're right Kurama. Naruto said, letting his head hang low. Here we go didn't I already? What? The fox paused. Had Naruto actually admitted to it? Yes you're right. But that doesn't make me feel any better. I'm going to discuss this with his death when she returns. Naruto said. Honestly Naruto I would have struck her down the first moment I knew she was with the army that killed the old man. The nine tails growled, thinking about all the bodies piled up in the road. He reminded himself to discuss that with him later. I'm not gonna kill someone, not unless they try to harm Yukari, or me. Like those soldiers. Kurama we both know I would never just flat out kill someone. Naruto said, heading back for the door. What if they threatened to kill Yukari? What would you do then? This comment made Naruto stop dead in his tracks. What if they did? No I won't allow that, Naruto thought, shaking the very idea from his head. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. Naruto simply said, putting on a fake smile, and walking out to see Yukari, and the clone having a staring contest. Hey what are you two doing? Naruto asked walking up to the two. Having a staring contest. Yukari shouted, as her eyes began to tingle. Boss I'm about to win. Don't ruin this. The clone said, with a smirk. The original suddenly got a very sneaky idea. Oh is that so? Naruto said putting up a hand sign to dismiss the clone. The copy saw this, and its eyes widened in horror. Boss? No. No, no. It shouted, just as Naruto dispelled the clone. Ha I win. Yukari shouted out, jumping up and down. Naruto, and Kurama simply smiled at the little girl. Good job Yukari. Naruto shouted, giving the girl a high five. Then her eyes immediately locked onto Kurama, and she ran up to him. Kurama can we play some more? Yukari said, eyes full of excitement. Sure kid. Kurama said, as he laid on the floor, and she rubbed his back. The front door to the cabin slowly opened, and Naruto was put on alert. His death slowly walked through the door. Oh you're back. Naruto lowered his guard slightly. His death smiled, and walked over to the couch, and sat next to Naruto. We should be ready to leave soon. His death said with a smirk, making Naruto shift uneasily in his seat. All right. I'll make sure Yukari's ready. Naruto said turning to look over, as the little girl played with the fox. Good. Now I must go make the final preparations for the journey. His death said, as she began to get off the couch, Naruto suddenly reached out, and grabbed her hand. His death looked back, surprised, as he grasped her hand looking up at her. Actually his death I was wondering if I could talk with you for a moment in private. Naruto said looking directly up to her icy eyes. His death was a bit shocked, what could he possible want to talk about? All right then lead the way. She said regaining her composure. Naruto quickly led her into the, that he just talked to Kurama in. He reactivated the privacy seal, and turned around crossing his arms. So what's this about? 
Is death asked feeling a bit uneasy by the way Naruto was acting. I didn't want to talk about it while Yukari was in the room, but yesterday when I arrived in the village that you found me and I. I found a whole bunch of dead bodies. Naruto said, as he kept a clear image of all the bodies pilled up in the street. Is death's eyes widened, as she realized what Naruto was about to ask. I also saw several pillars of ice sticking up through the town. I just need to know is death were you the one responsible? Naruto asked turning around with his face full of seriousness. Is death knew that she couldn't lie to him, it would only end in a negative end for her. No Naruto I wasn't the one responsible, but I did play a part. Is death said, looking away. She regretted telling the blonde that. What's that supposed to mean? Naruto shouted out. Please Naruto it's not what you think. Is death said trying to defend herself. She wanted to avoid contact with him at all costs. Then please do explain. Naruto said crossing his arms again, staring at her. Ultra class danger beasts were attacking the town, these people did nothing wrong to upset the capital. So we wouldn't have assaulted, or harmed those people anyway. My army stepped in, and tried to stop them, but they tore through us. All the people that had survived were either gravely injured, or had nowhere to go. So we had to put them out of their misery. Is death revealed to the blonde. This enraged Naruto. Why would she do this? He thought to himself. So what? You just killed them, because they couldn't defend themselves, or had anywhere else to do. Naruto barked back at her. The weak die, and the strong survive Naruto. Is death repeated her father's quote. This enraged the blonde even more. And I told you that, that's a load of crap. You could have saved those people as death. Naruto yelled, causing his chakra to slowly boil. Kurama was immediately put on alert in the next room. It doesn't matter now Naruto they're already dead. Is death said, walking towards the one lone window in the room. By your hand. Naruto shouted, as he walked towards the door. Naruto you need to understand. She said turning around, and grabbing hold of his hand. No. Naruto shouted jerking his hand away. Stay away from Yukari. Once we get close enough to the capital, Yukari, and I are splitting away from your group. After that stay out of our way is death. Because if you even try to lay a finger on her I will make you, and this capital regret it. Naruto yelled out, voice full of anger. He quickly walked out of the room, leaving his death alone. Naruto. She whispered to herself, looking at the floor, hair covering her eyes. You okay kid? Kurama asked, as Naruto exited the side room. I'm fine. Naruto said looking down at the ground. He clenched his fists, why did she have to be like that? To Naruto, all life was important, no matter who, or what you are. Damn it. Naruto shouted out, as he slammed his fist against the wall. Naruto. Yukari asked walking up to him. She looked up at him with her big blue eyes, she was clearly worried about the blondes. Naruto instantly snapped out of his emotional state as soon as he saw Yukari. He put on a faint smile, and rubbed the little girl's head. I'm alright. Sorry. We're about to leave. Are you ready? Naruto asked with a smile. But you could clearly tell the blonde was still a little bit anger. Uha. Yukari said nodding her head. Even for being as young as she was, she could tell that Naruto was faking his smile. This worried the little girl. Great let's get going then. Naruto said, as Yukari took his hand, and Kurama jumped on his shoulder. The group began to walk out of the door, as his death exited the room she had her argument with Naruto in. The sage stopped, and looked directly at her. We'll meet you outside. He said with a hint of bitterness in his voice. She nodded her head, as he walked out of the door with Yukari, and Kurama. We should probably move to the front gates. Naruto said, as they began walking down the lone path through the trees towards the army's camp. Yukari looked unsure for a moment while walking, she began to drag her feet. Naruto quickly noticed this and stopped. You okay? 
Yukari quickly shook her head in response. Please Naruto don't leave me when we get to the capital. She cried out, tears streaming down her eyes. A sad smile appeared across the blonde's face. He knew exactly what she was going through. Naruto slowly kneeled down next to the girl, and wiped a tear off her cheek. Yukari I will never do such a thing. I promised your grandpa. I promised you. I will always be there. He smiled at her, Yukari broke into tears, and cried into the blonde's chest. The two stood there for a minute as Yukari let out all of her bent-up stress. As the girl became silent Naruto looked down at her. Feeling better? He asked keeping the same on his face. Yeah. Yukari said, slightly grinning. Naruto once again took her by the hand, and began walking down the road. So Yukari? Naruto asked after a couple minutes of silence. Yes. She asked looking up at the shinobi with curiosity in her eyes. When we get to the capital, would you like to go anywhere? Naruto asked, putting on a thinking pose. Um, wait I know. I want to go to a candy shop. Yukari exclaimed. In her entire she had been able to try candy. She remembered faint memories of her grandfather saying that his was bad for her. She of course didn't believe this at all. Then it's settled we'll go to a candy store. Naruto said with a smirk looking down at the girl. I could go for some chocolate as well. Kurama said from Naruto's shoulder. Doesn't chocolate kill foxes? Naruto asked looking over to the fox. Kurama pawed the blonde smack dab in the face. I'm a goddamn tailed beast, to think I would be defeated by something like that is just sad. Kurama said, as he jumped off Naruto's shoulder, and onto the ground. Kurama began stomping off, or whatever you would call stomping for a fox. Well someone's in a good mood. Naruto said quietly mocking the fox. This caused Yukari to lightly giggle. I will still eat you. Kurama yelled sprinting back, and trying to jump onto Naruto. Naruto just began to laugh at the fox's antics. As Kurama, tried to jump onto Naruto, both of their eyes suddenly narrowed, as they turned looking down the dirt road. Three figures could be seen approaching them. The figure was of regular height and clearly a make, while the one to his left was of much smaller height. Naruto couldn't tell if they were male or female. Then the last figure was of tall stature, even taller than Naruto. Well, well what do we have here? The largest one asked looking down at Naruto, as he approached with the other two. The blonde could now be pies all three of their appearances now. The largest one in front of him had long, spiky blonde hair and pure white, pupilous eyes which freaked out Naruto a bit. He wore a headdress similar to horns and the same uniform as the two others beside him. The man beside him had gray hair worn in a long ponytail, blue eyes and a mustache. The last person confused Naruto greatly, he could tell that they were a boy, but he looked so feminine. He had blonde hair and golden eyes. A headdress similar to the tall one, and a freaking tail. Can I help you? Naruto finally asked, as he finished observing the group. We're just seeing what a strange man like you is doing coming from the general's cabin. The smallest one said pointing to Naruto. He had a really annoying voice in Naruto's opinion. We're just getting ready to leave same as you. Naruto said as he moved Yukari closer to him protectively. Oh is that so? The one with the long ponytail asked. Yes. Naruto said trying to defuse this situation. The one with the tail quickly walked over to Naruto, and spotted Yukari. What a cute little girl. He said, as he kneeled down next to her. Yukari hid behind Naruto in fear. Oh come on I won't hurt you. The man said trying to reach back, but was quickly pushed away by the defensive blonde. Ah what the hell. He shouted out. Don't touch her. Naruto said, as he guarded Yukari instinctively. Kurama was already standing behind the group of three, ready to attack at a moment's notice. I think you need to learn some respect. The largest one said, as he reached for his back. The man took out a very large axe, and smiled with glee. Naruto simply sighed, 
and looked towards his tailed beast. Kurama watch her. No problem. The fox said quickly scurrying back over, and stood in front of Yukari defensively. I'm going to tell you this right now. Walk away. Naruto said staring the man dead in the eye. Ha 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 ha. Is this guy for real? The large man asked looking back to his other companions. So be it, but I hope you know I gave you a way out. Naruto said beginning to gather chakra in his left hand, and walked forward a bit to make sure Yukari wouldn't be within range. Bring it. I'll fucking kill you. The man screamed with rage, as he took off racing towards Naruto. The shinobi simply stood there for a moment, and as the man was about to strike, Naruto disappeared within an instant. Where did he go? The man asked looking around while keeping his guard up. You're too slow. A voice said from behind him. The large man quickly spun around, just as Naruto pulled back for a punch. The blonde focused a small amount of Kurama's chakra into his arm. The arm suddenly started glowing a bright neon orange, as a small amount of Kurama's chakra cloak appeared on Naruto's arm. He slammed into the man's axe with so much force that the axe completely shattered from the punch. The man was sent flying back, and his comrades quickly ran over to him. My Taigu! He yelled, as he looked towards the blonde with rage. Stay away from her! Naruto said, as the small portion of the Kurama cloak disappeared on his arm. The man was about to get up to charge the blonde, but the other with the ponytail put his hand in front of him. Leave this to me. He said, as he slipped on a ring, and started to move his fingers. Enough. A voice suddenly shouted out which made all three of the men stop in their tracks. His death came walking down the road, and glided past Yukari, and Kurama. Past Naruto, and up to the now bowing men. It's death. The man with the ponytail said, as he lowered his head. All three of you will report to your positions, and when we return to the capital all of you will face punishment. It's death spit out, as she quickly turned her head, and walked back to Naruto. Yes. The man said, as he, and the others got up. They all walked off towards the camp in defeat. Little did they know Yukari was sticking her tongue out at them as they went away. I'm surprised you were able to break a taigu. His death said, walking up to Naruto. They don't seem that tough. The blonde said, brushing it off like it was nothing. Thanks for that. Naruto said in a low voice. His death simply nodded her head. She was about to say something, but heard footsteps approaching them. General. A lone soldier yelled out, as he ran up to her. What is it? Is death asked. We're ready to move out. The man said, trying to regain his breath. Understood. Tell the men it's time to move. Is death said, ushering the man away. Yes general. He said sprinting off back towards the camp. Well we should get going. Is death said, beginning to walk in the direction of the camp. All right. You ready Yukari? Naruto asked, looking down at her. She looked up, and nodded her head with a bright smile. Yes. Let's go then. Naruto said with an equally bright smile, as they began to move down the path towards the camp. Kurama walked with them, as he continued to make threats about wanting to eat chocolate, or he would eat Naruto. Two days later. His death army had made amazing time, as they made their way back to the imperial city. They were current 30 miles out from the capital. The army had been marching for four straight hours along a dirt road that to one side had a small forest that lead up to very large snowy mountains. On their other side was a very deep gorge that was certain to be filled with different types of danger beasts. We're closing in on the capital. A lead soldier shouted from far ahead. Excellent. His death wiped some sweat off her forehead, as she walked with Naruto next to a small covered wagon that held Yukari. His death. The blonde next to her asked, as he looked to her with a blank expression. Yes. She said looking up to him, as the army marched along. Yukari, and I will be leaving soon. We do wish you good luck on your way back to the capital. Naruto said, with half a smile. 
Same to you Naruto. But I do wish to give you one last piece of advice Naruto. Please don't try to join Night Raid. Is death said, as she knew she couldn't stop the blonde from leaving. And why is that? Naruto asked. He'd been told by the old man to join Night Raid, and the blonde had been considering it. Because you'll be better off with the Empire. Then those assassins. Is death said simply. Now is death wasn't an idiot. She was extremely smart for her young age. She knew that if Naruto were to join Night Raid it would make them an unstoppable force. The revolutionary army would surely get a massive boost of support if he sided with them. But if he were to join the imperial army then they could immediately crush the rebels with his extremely power abilities. Why is that? So I can help you kill more innocent people. Naruto bursted out, immediately enraged. He did not want to be a part of an empire that would simply kill anyone that they deemed useless to them, or got in their way. Naruto I'm just giving you this advice. Is death said, as she put her hand up trying to calm the blonde. I'm not saying I'll join Night Raid but if they contact me then I'll consider their offer. Naruto said, as he calmed down. Yukari was too busy playing with a sleeping Kurama to pay too much attention to the two's argument. So be it then. I wish you good luck. Is death said, as she began to walk forward. Naruto was about to say the same to her but was immediately interrupted by a large explosion from the back of the convoy. What the hell? Is death shouted, as a wagon came flying over her head, and was sent sailing over the cliffside, but not before one imperial soldiers flew out of it and landed in front of them. Soldier report. Is death asked, immediately running up to man. Naruto immediately stood in front of Yukari's wagon protectively. Tyrant's general. Two of them. Attacking the back of the group. The soldier managed to get out before, blood filled his mouth, and he died. We'll be slaughtered. Another soldier said, as he overhead the man's comment. Everyone in Estetha's army knew the risks of ultra-class danger beasts. Just because their leader knew how to deal with them, didn't mean they knew. I'll handle this. Is death said, as she began to turn away towards the back of her army. General those are ultra-class danger beast. Let alone tyrant. A woman shouted back at her. Is death was in the women's face in a split second. Enough. I can handle simple danger beasts. She shouted, as she sprinted towards the back of the group. General wait. The women shouted out trying to get her to stop. But it was no use. Naruto knew that these danger beasts sounded like trouble, if people were this worried. He had to do something. Yukari. Naruto said turning to her with a smile. Yes. She asked. She knew that her blonde protector was about to do something stupid. Hold out your hand for a moment. Naruto asked. I'm okay. Yukari did as Naruto commanded and a split second later a glowing Uzumaki seal appeared on her hand. What did you do? She stuttered looking at the glowing gold symbol. With this mark I can instantly transport back to you wherever. I've been working on it for the past two days. Naruto said with a sheepish smile. What's it called? She asked looking at the seal with more interest. Naruto quickly made three clones before he responded to her. I'll tell you later. For now I need you to go with my clones. He said pointing to the other Naruto's. Okay Naruto. She said unsure for a moment, but then a smile filled her face. Don't worry I'll be back in no time. He said patting her head. Take care of her. Naruto said looking over to one of the clones. You got it boss. He said giving him a thumbs up, and grabbing Yukari, as they sprinted off into the forest. The real Naruto took off sprinting through the convoy, passing Imperial soldiers, as they tried to get the chaos under control. Naruto continued to sprint through the convoy, until his sprint slowed into a jog, as he started to reach the back of the convoy. His eyes widened in horror. Fires raging around overturned wagons. Horses, and people alike burning alive. The blonde quickly shook his head, trying to ignore everything around him. 
he knew that if he took out the threat, then a lot more people wouldn't end up like them. Judging by the level of carnage. The beasts are quite large. Kurama said suddenly appearing on his shoulder. Then it's good that we have someone who can beat the crap out of them. Naruto said with determination, as he smacked both of his fists together. Kurama laughed at this. Hee hee. I knew we'd have some fun today kid. The blonde would never change. Suddenly a massive piece of ice flew out of the sky over a tree lean in front of them. It landed with a massive impact that shook the ground. I'm guessing over there. Kurama said with a smirk, as Naruto took off sprinting with him. His death was barely holding her own against the two massive tyrants. They were quite large, and could turn invisible. Not to mention their enhanced intelligence. These things even gave her a run for her money. Damn it. She said, as she quickly dodged another swipe from the invisible tyrant's claws. But she miscalculated the reach of the its claws, and she was knocked flying across the small clearing she was in. Little did the general know that the other tyrant was waiting patiently on the other side of the field. His death was too preoccupied with tyrant near her to notice it until the last second. She could barely move her body so that the blow wouldn't kill her immediately. Ah! She screamed out in pain, as the lower left side of her body was impaled by one of the tyrant's razor-sharp claws. She looked down to see the massive claw come into view, as the tyrant came out of invisibility. The claw went straight through, and took part of her insides with it. Luckily for her it didn't get her heart. She looked up at the tyrant defiantly, as it smiled down at her with its large teeth. Its death was about to prepare one final ice attack before she felt a suddenly large killing presence reach her. It caused both of the tyrants to look over in the direction of the convoy. Out of the way. Naruto screamed out, as he crashed through the trees, and smashed his fist into the tyrant's jaw that was holding his death. The danger beast instantly flung his death off of its hand. The general hit the ground hard, and rolled to the edge of the clearing. Man you guys sure look ugly. Naruto said walking forward up to the two tyrants. If you looked closely you could see the orange pigment above his eyes. He was in sage mode. Naruto get out of here. You may be powerful but these things are extremely large, and intelligent. His death shouted out, as she gripped her side trying not to bleed out. Ha! Give me a break. I thought you were the empire's strongest. Your empire must be pretty weak then. He asked grinting his teeth I'll show you exactly what I can do. Kurama. He screamed, as a large roar was suddenly heard, and the area was bathed in a bright orange light. Kurama. His death asked, shielding her eyes from THR powerful light. A split second later the light faded, and his death opened her eyes. What she saw next truly amazed her. A massive orange and luminescent fox stood tall in the clearing. It stood defiantly overhead of the tyrants. The fox had thick black lines running across his body, and nine large tails. The tyrant started to back away from the tailed beast. What's wrong? Never seen a nine-tailed fox. The QB smiled, showing his razor-sharp teeth off to the two ultra-class beasts. Let's make this quick. Naruto shouted out, as he sprinted away from Kurama towards the injured general. With pleasure. Kurama chuckled, as he charged head first towards the smaller enemies. Naruto on the other hand was slowly healing his death from her dire wound. Her body parts began finishing regenerating, as the wound closed up, and Naruto took his hands away from her. Consider us even now. He said wiping a small amount of sweat off of his forehead. Thank you. His death said, as she slowly stood up, and felt a massive shockwave go through her body. She turned to see the fox tearing apart the tyrants, she was amazed that this fox could be this powerful, but then remembered who its container was. Kurama you almost done. Naruto shouted in annoyance. This is too much fun. Kurama laughed, as he bit down on one of the tyrants' necks, ripping off a very large piece of meat. The beast screamed in pain, before it fell over on its side, as it began to bleed out. No matter how adaptable these beasts were they were no match for Kurama. 
As the fox held the piece of flesh in his mouth the second tyrant punched Karama on the side of his jaw forcing the fox to swallow the piece of meat. This taste fucking disgusting. He spat out, as he tried to get the taste out of his mouth. The nine tails turned back towards the last tyrant, the tyrant tried to put up its arms in defense, but was much too slow for the fox. Karama got through his guard, and put one hand on the snout of the tyrant. While he put his other hand on its lower jaw. Karama then began to pull apart the danger beast's jaws. A second later he heard a sickening snap, as he ripped its lower jaw off of head. Karama then took the lower jaw, and smashed it down the throat of the tyrant. A second later the tyrant fell over dead next to the other tyrant, that had long since died. Disgusting creatures. The QB said, as he quickly began walking over to Naruto, and reverted back to his much smaller size. Could you have been a little less bloody Kurama? Naruto said, crossing his arms. I needed to relieve some stress. He said shrugging his shoulders. So this is the power of the tailed beasts. Is death said, as she looked down at Kurama. That's right girly. The QB said with a wide grin they made the blonde lightly chuckle. But a second later a fresh sit of memories flushed back into his mind. Ones that were met with a swift, and an incredible clumsy end. It could only mean one thing. One of his clones had been dispelled. Shit. Naruto said out loud. This caught the attention of both Kurama, and his death. What? The general asked tilting her head in confusion. No time to explain got to go. I'll see you as death. Naruto said beginning to form a few hand signs. Naruto wait. Is death said, trying to reach for the blonde, but was too late, as he disappeared along with Kurama. See what you did. One of the blonde's clones shouted out deep in the forest. But we had to save the girl. The other clone shouted back to its other counterpart. Yeah but now look. One of us died. So the boss is going to come in all guns a-blazing. The first clone yelled out. No he won't, besides he'll understand why one of us died in this situation. The second said, waving his hand in a non-caring manner. Yeah, but it has to be one of the worst, and stupidest ways for any of us to die. The first said, as he put his palm up to his face, and shook his head. Yeah, yeah. How's Yukari? The other asked, looking back at the young girl on the first clone's back. I'm fine. Yukari said in response, as she looked incredibly bored on the clone's back. What about the girl? The first asked, pointing back to the passed out older girl on the other clone's back. The girl he was referring to had long flowing blonde hair, and bright green eyes. She was wearing something similar to what looked like a cowgirl outfit. She's fine. She's still breathing. The clone said, as he adjusted her on his back. There's no sign of the other one so that's good. The first said, as he peered off into the distance. Yeah. She gave me the creeps. The second clone said, as a shiver went down his spin, as he remembered the strange girl. Hey but those snacks looked good. The first said with a smirk, Yukari nodded her head in agreement. She yelled at you when you tried to take one. The second shouted back at the first. Yeah well. The clone wasn't able to finish his sentence, as a bright light soon appeared behind him. I'm here. The original shouted, as he stood defensively in front of the clone holding Yukari. Relax boss there is no danger. Little Yukari's fine. The first clone said, as started rubbing the little girl's head. But? Why did one of you get dispelled? Naruto said, as he lowered his guard, and looked around for any source of trouble. Okay so there was some danger. The second clone said shrugging his shoulders. Explain. Naruto said crossing his arms. As the two clones argued for another second, Naruto looked around, and noticed Kurama was no longer with him. Suddenly he heard a grumble in the back of his mind. The fox had gone back into the seal. Here I'll explain it. Well you see we ran into this crazy girl with a sword, and she was battling this girl. 
the second clone said pointing back to the unconscious cowgirl on his back. And who exactly is this girl? Naruto asked, walking up to the clone, and staring at the girl. We have no idea. But the girl with the sword was about to kill her. So naturally we stepped in. The first said boasting. Yukari bonked the top of his head in response. While the first clone rubbed his head, the original kept staring at the girl. It was a pretty short battle. She summoned some people, but they weren't that strong. We made quick work of them. The second explained to him. Then where is she now? Naruto asked, as kept taking in all the girl's features. She ran away. The first said shrugging his shoulders, and putting on a smirk. So what are we going to do with her boss? The second asked him pointing back to the girl. I guess we'll have to take her with us. Naruto said as he took Yukari off of the first clone's back, and put her on his. Yeah. Maybe once she wakes up we can find where she belongs. The first said. Yeah come on we need to get going. The second shouted out as he ran off into the woods. The first clone chased after him. Naruto just sighed, and started running as well. You guys are such a pain. Now I understand why Sakura found me so annoying. Naruto said running next to the two clones. Ah come on boss. The second said putting on a cheeky smile. Never mind come on let's get moving. Naruto said picking up speed, and moving deeper through the woods. Understood. Both clones said in unison. Time skip, few hours later. Boss there's a road ahead. The first clone said, as he landed on a branch beside Naruto. Any movement? Naruto asked, trying to remain as quiet as possible, because Yukari had fallen asleep on his back. Yes. Looks like a group of merchants, and one person following behind them at about a hundred feet. The clone said, as he leaned against the trunk of the tree. The second clone was sitting on a tree farther behind them, still carrying the unconscious girl. Naruto peered over to the road, and could see a small wagon rolling down the road. Suddenly the ground began to shake violently, and everyone was put on alert. An earthquake? The clone beside him asked. No I don't think. Naruto was interrupted by a large crash on the road. He looked over to see a weird looking creature on the road staring down at the wagon. Earth Dragon. The men on the wagon shouted, as they jumped off of it right before the beast smashed it to pieces. Both men began to run away, their faces filled with fear. Damn it. We have to help them. You stay here with Yukari. Naruto said, handing Yukari over to first clone. Understood boss. The clone said, as he took Yukari, and leaned back against the tree. You put the girl down and we'll go help them. The other clone nodded, and put the girl down next to the clone holding Yukari. The two started to sprint out into the road, and quickly neared the earth dragon. Let's end this with one hit. Naruto shouted out, as he started to focus chakra in his right hand. Yeah. The clone said, adding his chakra to the glowing yellow orb. The two picked up speed, and rushed towards the earth dragon. Rasen Naruto immediately stopped and the danger beasts dropped dead on the ground in front of them. What the hell? His clone asked looking around. A boy soon landed in front of the dead earth dragon. Naruto quickly took in all his features. The boy was about the same age as him, he had green eyes and medium length brown hair with a cowlick. The boy wore a tan sweater vest, a pair of black pants and combat boots. That was amazing boy. Shouted a voice. The two men who were running in fear from the beast had come back. Naruto dispelled his clone, and simply stood behind the boy, waiting for a moment to speak. You were actually able to defeat an earth dragon single-handedly. One of them said, shaking the boy's hand. Well obviously for someone like me that was a piece of cake. The boy shouted. Clearly boasting about the kill. What's your name? The other one asked with a smile. I'm Tatsumi. And you better remember the name. I'm gonna make it big in the capital. The boy shouted out pointing to him. 
the two men's expression immediately changed from relief to worry. So you want to become successful in the capital too? The other one asked Tatsumi. Yeah. It's every country boy's dream to make it big there. Tatsumi said with a bright smile. The two men just looked away with a worried expression. What's up? Tatsumi asked clearly noticing their worried faces. The capital's not some fantasy land where you'll find all of your wildest dream and be served food on a silver plater. There are worse monsters than danger beasts there. The first one explained to him. Are you saying there's something worse than danger beasts out there? Tatsumi shouted out with a worried expression. Yeah. People. Their hearts are filled with darkness and hatred. It's filled with guys like that. The second one said looking away. Then I guess the capital needs me. A loud voice shouted out from behind Tatsumi. He turned around to see a boy with spiky blonde hair and a ridiculous orange jumpsuit. Ha! Huh? Tatsumi asked, looking at the boy. His face had three whisker-like marks on each side. Tatsumi was extremely confused. Who are you? One of the men asked. I'm Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. You're going to the capital too? The blonde asked staring down at Tatsumi with a kind smile. Yeah. Tatsumi asked, backing away awkwardly from the blonde. Want to travel together? Naruto asked suddenly. Tatsumi face filled with shock. But little did he know Naruto had a master plan. He needed someone to carry the cowgirl. Sure he could use his clone, but that was such a bore. But there was also another reason. Naruto for some reason saw a bit of himself in Tatsumi. Um sure. Tatsumi said, not even thinking if over. Great let's go. Naruto said, turning around, and began to run back into the woods to get the others. Tatsumi was about to follow but was quickly stopped by one of the men from wagon. What is it? Tatsumi asked, looking back. Take this. The man said, handing Tatsumi a large bag of coins. For what? Tatsumi asked, raising his eyebrow. For saving us. You earned it. The man smiled. The other man behind him nodded in agreement. Well thanks. Now with this I'm sure to find a decent place to stay tonight, and then I can send the rest of this back to my village. Tatsumi said with a smile, as he turned around to see Naruto standing with what looked like a copy of himself. This caused Tatsumi's eyes to widen in shock. The copy had a woman on his back that looked like a cowboy. On Naruto's back there was a small girl staring over at Tatsumi with big blue eyes. Um Naruto right? Tatsumi asked looking over to him. Yeah. The blonde asked. The little girl on his back put her chin on the top of Naruto's head and stared down at Tatsumi. Who's that he asked pointing at Naruto's copy. The clone started to grin. Oh yeah that's my clone. Naruto said pointing over to him. This caused Tatsumi's eyes to nearly pop out of his head. Clone. He shouted out. This guy can make copies of himself. Tatsumi thought to himself. It's a long story. I can explain it to you on the way. Naruto said, waving the thought away. But could you carry that girl? The clone asked looking over at Tatsumi. What? Why me? Tatsumi shouted out. Because my clone needs a break. Naruto said with a smirk. But both Naruto and his clone knew they could go on for another 20 days without needing to rest. Fine fine. Give her here. Tatsumi said, as he bent down. The clone who was now currently holding the unconscious girl bridle placed her on Tatsumi's back. Tatsumi had no trouble holding the women. Thanks. You're dismissed now. Naruto said with a smile. All right. See ya boss. The clone said quickly disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Tatsumi eyes just widened in shock even more, but then he felt someone watching him. He turned to see Yukari staring directly at him, but when she noticed he saw her, she quickly turned away. Um Naruto who's that? Tatsumi asked pointing up to Yukari. 
Oh her. This is Yukari. Naruto said patting the little girl's head. Hello. She stuttered out, without looking over at Tetsumi. She's a bit shy. Naruto whispered out, causing her to bury her face even more in Naruto's hair. Well it's very nice to meet you. Tatsumi said with a bright smile, that almost rivaled Naruto's. Yukari didn't look up from Naruto's head. Come on we only have a short walk to the capital. The blonde said, motioning for Tatsumi to begin walking forward. Right. Tatsumi said, as he adjusted the girl's position on his back, and began to walk down the road. Say Tatsumi why are you going to the capital? Naruto asked as they walked down the road. Well. Tetsumi began. Done with chapter 2. Yeah. This will most likely be updated monthly, as I have two other Naruto crossovers that I need to update. Also there may have been some out of character moments for his death in this chapter. I do apologize that, but she's honestly a bit scared of Naruto, and his power. Anyways I'm pretty sure all of you have already figured out who the girl with the whole cowgirl get up is. If not then you'll figure it out next chapter when she wakes up. Some of you also might ask why there's more than one Tyrant Ultra class, well that's because they're a species so I thought it'd be fitting if there were more. Anyway time for the author question, I'm looking for a new category of danger beast, because as you can tell Naruto can mop the floor with the Ultra class. So I need a new class. Feel free to put your suggestions in the reviews. Also some new danger beasts for that class would greatly be appreciated. So come up with some awesome new danger beasts for me. Akame. Akame. Akame wake up. A loud voice suddenly called out to the girl. She was quickly roused from her sleep. She instantly shot up her head, and began to look around. What? What's going on? She asked looking confused. The girl known as Akame looked in the direction of the voice calling to her. She saw one of her teammates kneeling over her, with a face full of worry. Thank God. You're okay. Leon said, as she reached out to give the girl a hug. As she hugged Akame, Akame finally got the chance to take in all her surroundings. Her eyes widened in shock when she saw where they now stood. A battered, and destroyed building in what looked like a marketplace. She looked out to see bodies everywhere in the street. Above the roof of buildings she could see bullets, as well as arrows shoot through the sky. What's going on? She thought to herself. Suddenly she heard Leon start to cough very violently, and then a second later she went limp. Leon. Akame stuttered out. The sound of Akame's voice shot the women back to life it's fine I'll be okay. We just need to get you out of here. Leon said with a weak smile, that's when Akame noticed the blood. On the side of Leon's mouth a steady stream of blood poured out, then Leon noticed more blood covering her stomach. A rather large wound had been made across her chest. What are you talking about? I can fight too. Akame said trying to get up, but she felt heavier than before. Like she had somehow put on more weight. A quick set of footsteps were suddenly heard sprinting towards their location. Leon was suddenly put on guard, as well as Akame. Akame. What are you doing here? Nagenda called out, as she approached to two. Leon let out a sigh of relief, and Akame dropped her guard. I told you, and Bullet to get Akame out of here. She can't fight in her condition. Nagenda said, pointing to Leon, as she walked up next to them. Bullet's dead, and I won't last that long either. Leon revealed, as she tried to hide her wound. Face filled with a bit of saddens. What the hell do you mean? Nagenda shouted out in anger, and shock. Is death got the better of me? Lionel's destroyed. I'm done. Leon said, moving her hand away from the wound, as blood continued to flow out. Damn it. Nagenda said, looking at the wound. What about Bullet? She asked, trying to change the topic. Couldn't say. I just saw something hit him, and a second later he was gone. Leon said, as she looked down at the ground, her hair covered her eyes. You could see the faintest tear roll down her cheek. Where is everyone else? 
Nagenda asked keeping her composure, as the sound of gunfire, and explosions reached their ears. We'll worry about that later, help me with Akame. Leon said, as she began to help Akame up, while struggling with her own wound as well. I can walk, I'm fine honestly. Akame said, trying to brush Leon off. But suddenly Nagenda grabbed her right arm, and put it over her neck, as they began to walk out of the destroyed building, and onto the decimated street. You shouldn't be here. Think of the baby. Nagenda said, looking ahead. Suddenly a billion questions, and shock started to fill her head. The jet-black-haired assassin could only ask one thing though. Baby? Yeah remember. Your child. The one you, and the knucklehead are going to have. The one from the prophecy. Are you sure you didn't get hit in the head? Leon asked, looking over at her with worry. Knucklehead? Akame asked, looking even more confused, as the gunfire near them suddenly increased tenfold. Yeah, Leon wasn't able to finish her sentence, as a large explosion blew up a building near them. Sending debris in every direction shit. Stay down. Nagenda shouted out, as the group ducked behind an overturned cart. Nagenda covered Akame protectively with her prosthetic arm. What's going on? Haven't we already taken the city? Leon shouted out, as she leaned on the cart, trying to stop the bleeding from her stomach. The revolutionary army was about to take the capital. Then this thing shows up. Nagenda said, as she pointed to the sky. Akame followed her finger to see a small flying object moving through the sky at high speed. It seemed to dive down, create a large explosion, and then flying back up all in an instant. Akame felt a large killing intent from it. Whatever it was, it was not friendly. What is it? Akame asked looking at it with curiosity, and caution. I have no idea. It just showed up, and began killing everyone. Imperial soldiers, rebellion soldiers, even civilians. Nagenda said staring at the flying object with anger and hate. Where's Naruto when you need him? Leon asked with a laugh, as she began to cough up more blood. Nagenda quickly moved over to her, and handed her a cloth. She wiped the blood off. You could tell the assassin didn't have much time. She was getting paler, and paler by the second. Naruto. Akame blurted out. She had never heard of that name in her life. Nagenda and Leon looked over at her with even more confusion than earlier. I came again are you sure you're okay? Leon asked, with worry in her voice. Yeah you seem like you've lost your memory. Nagenda said, looking down at her, as she quickly examined her. I don't know. I came said shaking her head. The TG user had no idea what was happening. Leon just shook her head, and began to walk forward down the street. She looked back with a smile. We'll just have to check when we get, she was never able to finish her sentence, as a large explosion filled the area. She tried to dodge, but was far too injured to get away in time. She was incinerated on contact. Leon and O. Akame screamed out, as her face filled with utter shock, terror, and rage she just watched one of her closest friends die right in front of her eyes. I finally found you. A feminine voice said from above. Nagenda and Akame both looked up to a bright white light looking down at them. Nagenda eyes widened in shock. Akame move. Nagenda screamed as she went to push Akame out of the way. She was sent staggering back a few feet, just in time before a bolt of white light shot down next to Nagenda. The area soon exploded into a fireball, luckily with her quick reflexes Akame was able to take cover behind a wall in the building. After the explosion died down Akame heard nothing but insane laughter, signaling that the person responsible for killing Leon, and quite possibly Nagenda was still around. A Akame. A weak voice suddenly spoke next to her. She quickly realized this voice was none other than her boss. Nagenda. Akame whispered looking around, her eyes finally landed on a heavily burnt body that was missing its legs. No. Akame said with fright, as she moved down next to the barely breathing Nagenda. A Akame you need to get out of here now. 
Find Naruto. He's the only one who can stop this. And protect you. Nagenda said, as life started to fade from her eyes. Akame had no idea who this Naruto person was, but from the sound of Nagenda, and Leon. She was pretty close to him. So she swallowed all her fear, and regained her composure letting her training with these types of situations kick in. She put on a blank expression, and looked down at Nagenda. Understood. She said in an emotionless tone. Now go. I'll distract it. Nagenda seemed out, as Akame flew through a small hole in the wall, and down an alleyway into the next street over. She hid behind a building, before a very large explosion filled her ears. Signaling that the building she was just in had been destroyed, along with the leader of Night Raid. She wanted to go back, and tear that thing apart for killing her comrades, but she knew she would be no match. So instead she let out a sigh trying to get her bearings before she felt a massive amount of killing intent directly behind her. Leaving so soon. A voice whispered. Akame immediately swung around to punch whoever it was, but her fist was instantly caught by a pure white hand that reached out of a bright white light that nearly blinded Akame. Another hand came out, and grabbed the girl by the neck forcing her into the air. Now it's time for you to die. You, and that blonde boy have been messing with my plans for too long. But before I kill you, I'll take that precious child from you. The feminine voice said in a sadistic tone, as the hand that blocked her punch reached down, and neared her stomach. Akane didn't know how to act so she just let her instincts kick in. Her face filled with rage, and she acted like an animal trying to protect its young from harm. The white light simply laughed, as it moved its hand closer to her stomach. It was ready to take her supposed baby. Akame didn't know what to do. Suddenly a bright glowing orange fist connected with the bright light, and it was sent back into a building. Akame was just about to fall to the ground, but someone caught her. Damn it. Who? The bright light shouted out from the building. Akame looked up, and her eyes filled with shock. A boy around her age, that appeared to be glowing in orange, yellow held her. From what she could see he had spiky hair, with two orange horns coming out of his upper forehead. He had bright orange eyes, and what appeared to be a glowing coat, with a black-like undersuit. Two black staffs floated around him, as well as nine different orbs behind his back. Stay away from her. He shouted out with rage, suddenly the boy's coat extended, and wrapped around that came protectively. So finally we. The gods of this world meet face to face. The bright light shouted walking out of the building, virtually unharmed. I am no god. The boy said, as Akame was brought close to him by the cloak. She could feel the warmth radiating from his body. Oh but you are. To these people you are at least. But tell me then. If you are no god, then what are you? The light asked, approaching the boy, and Akame. I am simply a person, that will protect the one I love no matter what. He said, looking down at her with a heartwarming smile. Akame knew instantly that the boy meant her. She couldn't help but blush, never before had someone said something like that about her. Even if that means your death. The light snickered. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm not allowed to die. The boy said looking up with a confident smirk. Oh. And why's that? The light asked clearly interested in an answer. Because I made a promise to someone I love. The boy suddenly shouted out, shocking Akame. I gave her my word that I would not die. That I would not make her feel any more sorrow in her life. That I would always been there for her. And I never go back on my word. Because that's my ninja way. The boy shouted out with such confidence, that even that light seemed to back away for a moment. But then it quickly approached the boy, and started to laugh. Fool! It shouted out, rushing towards the two, forming what looked like a pure white rod in one of its hands. Suddenly Akame was placed instantly on the side of the street, looking back at the man. He simply smiled at her, before he formed what looked like a golden ball of energy in his right hand. He turned towards the light with a smirk, and began to run. As the two neared, all the buildings and junk in the area began to get blown away. 
Akame had trouble holding her ground. The boy's face filled with determination as he approached the white light. The empire ends today. The boy seemed, as the orb and the rod connected. Resulting in a massive explosion that blew Akame away. Everything went black for Akame a split second later. The black-haired assassin's eyes flew open, as she realized that she was looking down, and the floor was approaching fast. Huh. Akame asked out loud, before she thumped to the ground, followed by maniacal laughter. Wake up. A voice shouted out from the door to her room. Akame would have quickly put up her guard, but the owner of the voice was someone she had known for a couple years. She looked over to see Leon hunched over laughing to her heart's content. Come on sleepyhead it's not like you to sleep for this long. Leon said, trying to control herself. Leon. Akame asked, looking surprised. She had thought that she had just witnessed Leon die not even a few minutes ago, but then reality kicked in, and she realized that it was a dream of some sorts. Yeah who else would it be? Now hurry up, and get dressed. We have an assignment tonight, and mine made a whole bunch of meat for breakfast. The moment she said that, Akame's eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. Leon laughed some more, and walked out of the room. Akame looked around, trying to confirm it was a dream. Once she was sure everything was fine she began to get up, that's when she realized she was holding something tightly in her hands. She looked down to see that Murasame was tightly in her grip, and looked to be pulsating with a strange type of white energy. The pulsing soon stopped, and she continued to stare for a couple more seconds. Akame looked around some more, before she dismissed the sight for later, and began to get dressed. So it was a dream. But it felt so real. She said putting on her clothes, as she looked at herself in the mirror. But who was that boy then? She said, as she finished getting everything ready. The girl soon exited her room, and walked downstairs. She walked into the kitchen to find all of her teammates there. Mine and Sheil were in the kitchen preparing meals. While Bullet, Leon, and Lubbock were all sitting at the table eating various foods. Yo Akame. Lubbock said looking up, and seeing her standing in the doorway. Another assignment tonight. It seems they're coming in like wildfire nowadays. Leon said, as she tossed a sheet aside, that informed them of their latest target in the capital. More corruption these days. It seems. Bullet said, sipping some coffee. Tell me about it. Yesterday I saw a group of kids being sold off to some rich pervert right on the streets. Lubbock said leaning back in his chair, and staring out the window. In broad daylight? Bullet asked, with a small amount of surprise in his eyes. Of course he knew how bad the capital was, but nevertheless it still shocked him how people could be so cruel. Yeah. I killed him later during the day, and rescued the kids. Lubbock added in. Dan this place is getting worse, and worse by the minute. Mine said walking onto the room with a large plate of meat. Sheil was not far behind her, as she was bringing more food in for the others. Akame's eyes were glued onto the plate of meat. When Mine put the food down she immediately sat down, and began to eat it quickly, but began to slow, when she recalled her very vivid dream. Yeah, but that's why we're here. Leon said getting up from her chair. She was about to head to the door when she noticed Akame had barely eaten anything. She was beginning to get worried. Something wrong Akame? Leon asked leaning beside her. Causing the rest of night raid present in the room to turn towards her with worried faces. Ha. Huh. Oh no it's nothing. Akame said face full of surprise when she realized that the dream was affecting her this much. Other people were beginning to notice. Really, because you haven't really touched any of your breakfast. This isn't like you. Leon said pointing to the mountain of food in front of her. Yeah. You also slept in today. Are you sure you're okay? Bullet asked. Akane knew she couldn't hide it forever, so she swallowed her doubts, and decided to tell them. Well. I'm not really sure, but I had this strange dream that's been bothering me. Akane said, face filling with worry. This put everyone on alert, because if Akame was worried about this, then it had to be serious. 
Tell us then. Mine said sitting down next to her. Bulat, Sheil, and Lubbock all nodded in agreement. Leon nodded her head as well. Akain took a deep breath, and began to explain the very vivid dream to the rest of her team. Time skip, five minutes later. That's certainly strange, and you said when you woke up you were gripping Murasaim tightly. Bulat asked putting on a thinking pose, as he thought the dream over. The others were thinking it over as well, although Leon was freaking out. She didn't want to die. Yeah. Do you think it might have something to do with it? Akame asked. It could be. We still don't know everything about your taigu. It could possibly have a dangerous side effect to it. Maybe very vivid dreams. Bullet said, closing his eyes, and crossing his arms. I have an idea. Lubbock shouted out suddenly. Everyone looked over at him raising an eyebrow. What is it Lubbock? Mine said sighing. Majority of the time he never had good ideas. What if the danger beast that Murasame was made from had the ability to see into the future like in some of the manga I read? Lubbock asked. Mine and Leon just put their hands up to their face shaking their heads. Leon turned towards Lubbock with an annoyed look. Lubbock that has to be one of the, she was interrupted by Bullet who raised his hand up to get everyone's attention. He could be right. Bullet said eyes closed, and arms crossed. Eh. Leon, and mine shouted out in unison. There are tigers out there with the ability to see into the future. It's quite possible that Murasame was made from a danger beast with that type of power. Bullet said. This is all too confusing for me. I don't want to deal with this. Akane come talk to me when you finally start having interests in boys. Leon said getting up from her chair, and beginning to walk towards the door that lead outside of their base. Where are you going? Lubbock asked. Down to the capital to collect information. What else? Leon asked, looking confused. You mean you're going to trick some rich pervert out of his money, and get drunk? Lubbock said with a smirk. Meh. We'll see where the day takes us. Leon said shrugging. Just remember we have that mission tonight in the high class district. She'll reminded her. Yeah, yeah. The family of sadist I remember. I'll be there. Leon said walking out of the door. Lubbock went to take care of some chores around the base. Mine, and she'll went to collect more food, and supplies in a nearby town. That left only Akame, and Bullet sitting in the dining room. Bullet was busy sharpening his sword, and Akame was in deep thought. She was trying her hardest to remember the dream, but it was slowly fading from her mind. The only thing she could remember clearly was the boy. His spiky hair, glowing attire, and his whisker marks. Naruto was his name wasn't it? Akame muttered to herself. She remembered Nagenda mentioning the name in the dream. Akame hadn't told the rest of Night Raid about the boy. She wanted to keep that to herself. How you say something Akame? Bullet asking looking up from sharpening his sword. Oh. Nothing just thinking. Akame said, as she turned to stare out the window. The boy's image still fresh in her mind. Time skip, two hours later. Wow wow so this is the capital. Tetsumi shouted out, as he marveled the massive skyline of the imperial city. He still carried the unconscious girl on his back, and was getting uneasy stares from the people walking past him. Naruto walked up behind him, with the still sleeping Yukari, and stared up at the imperial palace with awe. It certainly is big. Naruto said, looking around at some of the other buildings. But then he quickly noticed the looks of despair, and solemn on everyone's face passing them. He saw homeless children in the streets, and beggars on the corners. The sight didn't sit too well with him. Tatsumi was too busy marveling at the buildings, and lively colors to notice all of this. If I'm successful here I can buy my entire village out of debt. Where should we go first? Tatsumi asked, with a face full of excitement. Little did the two know someone was observing them from the shadows quietly. How about we find a place to stay first? Naruto was interrupted back a dust cloud, as Tatsumi sped by him. 
Come on the barracks are this way. Tetsumi shouted out with a smile full of glee. Tetsumi wait. Naruto called out to him. The boy came to a speedy stop. What? He asked looking back confused. Naruto had know that Tetsumi had wanted to join the army so he could save his village. He had explained that all to him on the way here. We should find an inn first to put these two at. Don't you think? Naruto said pointing to Yukari on his back, and the girl on Tetsumi's. Well yeah I suppose. Tetsumi said, fully thinking the situation through. We'll go to the barracks when we're done. Naruto said, walking in the opposite direction of Tetsumi. All right fine. Tetsumi said, quickly following Naruto. The two had walked no more than five minutes, before they found a small inn near a small park. The two agreed on it, and walked into the building. They were greeted by a rather skinny man, who wore what looked like a bellhop uniform. Naruto went up to the man, and asked for a room. The man complied, and Naruto handed the man a rather large bag of coins. Naruto had received the money from his death, who gave it to him before they left the north. Thank you. Naruto said with a nod. Yukari was still asleep on his back. First door on your left, up those stairs. The man sent pointing to a set of stairs on the far side of the room. Naruto and Tatsumi went up the stairs and walked down a short hallway before finding their room. Naruto gripped the handle and opened the wooden door. It was a rather small room with a small bathroom to their left and two beds in the main area with a window on the far wall. Geese they charge this much to stay in one room? I don't know if we'll have enough to pay for the rest of the night. Tatsumi said, as he set the girl down on the bed closest to him. Naruto did the same with Yukari. Times seem tough here. Haven't you noticed? Naruto said, as he pulled the covers over Yukari, who happily snuggled into the bed. What do you mean? This place looked very lively today. Tatsumi asked, looking confused. He thought Naruto had a screw loose. The imperial capital was like heaven. Not really. No one was smiling, everyone had a solemn expression. Naruto said, as he walked up to the window, and stared down at the streets. People didn't look like they were happy here, from what he sensed it felt like everyone here was imprisoned. He wanted to do something about it. Anyway didn't you want to go to the barracks? Naruto asked, turning back towards him. Sure do. Tatsumi said with a wide grin, as he went to the door. I'll stay here, and watch over these two. Naruto said pointing over the the beds. Where the others of their group laid. All right then. I'll be back in a bit. Tatsumi said, walking out of the door. See ya. Naruto said, as he heard the door close. The blonde went to sit cross-legged on the ground, as he heard a poofing noise in front of him, and saw Kurama sitting there with a neutral expression. What's up Kurama? Naruto asked, staring down at the fox. Ah nothing kid. Just got bored sitting around in your seal. Kurama said, rolling around on his stomach. Oh alright then. Naruto said, as he took out one of his kunais, and began to sharpen it on one of his sharpening tools. So what do you think we should do? Kurama asked, as he finally stopped rolling around. What do you mean? Naruto asked looking up at the fox. Now that we're here in the capital. We should think of a plan. Kurama said tilting his head. Do you have anything in mind? Naruto asked putting down his kunai. What about the group the old man and his death talked about? He suggested. Night raid wasn't it? Naruto asked. He tried to remember back, when he talked to the old man about them. His death had said to avoid them, but Naruto would never trust her. Yeah. We should try, and find them. Kurama said, getting up from the ground, and walking over to the window. We could do that. But I need to keep Yukari safe. The blonde said looking back over at the sleeping girl. He would protect her no matter what. Yeah agreed. We need to do some more research on them, before we could possibly think about approaching them. Kurama said with a smirk, 
but then he suddenly tensed up for a moment looking behind the blonde. Naruto already knew that she was standing over him with a gun pointing at the back of his head. The shinobi just let out a sigh. You can put the gun down. I won't hurt you. He said turning his head to see the cowgirl had now awoken, and was very confused. She held her carbon steel pistols up in defense. You have ten seconds to tell me where I am, and who the hell you are. She shouted out, as she moved her guns closer to him. Naruto could tell she was trying not to panic. Kurama had watched the entire thing, and was now dying of laughter. Have fun boy. I'll go do some research on Night Raid. Kurama said, as he jumped out of the window, and into the capital streets below. Useless fox. Naruto muttered under his breath. But he realized that he needed to defuse the situation, or he would endanger Yukari. I'm Naruto, and I saved your life. Naruto said, beginning to stand up. Saved my life? What the hell are you talking about? The girl shouted out in frustration. You were being attacked by a strange girl, so my clones came in to save you. If my memory serves me right you would have died if we hadn't intervened. Naruto informed her of all the information he got from his clones. The memories came flooding back to the girl, how she had almost met her end by that insane sword that, that crazy girl held. She remembered that she failed to assassinate her target. This meant she wouldn't be able to return to her clan. Fine. Maybe I believe you. But where the hell am I at? She yelled out, much to Naruto's annoyance. Could you please be quieter? You'll wake Yukari. Naruto said pointing back to the girl, who was now tossing and turning in the sheets. I don't care. Now tell me. The girl said, although her voice was now a loud whisper. You're in the imperial capital. We brought you here. Naruto said crossing his arms. The girl's eyes widened when Naruto said capital. She shouldn't be here. Why am I here in the capital of all places? The girl said, with more frustration in her voice this time. It was the safest place to go. Naruto said shrugging his shoulders. Or so I thought. He said to himself. This is bull. Does anyone know who I am? she asked raising her guns, with her hands on the triggers. No. Not even me. So how about you put the gun down, and we'll talk. Naruto said, as he went to sit down on the floor in front of her. Fine. The girl said, putting her weapons away, and sat directly in front of Naruto. The blonde began to explain to her about this everything that had happened while she was out cold. I guess I understand now blondie. The girl said leaning against the bed. She still couldn't believe that she almost died, all because of that crazy girl. You never did tell me your name. Naruto said, with an annoyed look. The girl simply put her right hand up towards his. Naruto did the same, and shook hers. It's Doya. She said with a smirk. Nice to meet you. Wait oh hey. Can I ask you something? Naruto asked, suddenly remembering something he had wanted to ask her ever since he got the memories back from his clones. The memory wasn't very long. It just involved all of his clones surrounding Doya protectively, and for some reason the other girl backed off. Yeah sure go ahead. Doya said crossing her arms. What were you fighting that girl for? He asked, with curiosity filling his eyes. She was my target. Doya simply stated, staring him dead in the eye. Target? The blonde asked, scratching his head. She didn't look like an assassin to him. Yeah. I'm an assassin for the Northern Tribe. I was ordered to go kill Kurom, for the benefit of our tribe but now that I failed I can never return to my tribe. She revealed, looking out the window. Eh. Why not? Naruto asked, shocked. Because of tradition. If we should fail to kill our target, then we'll die by our target. You shouldn't have saved me. Doya said looking back at him, with a bit of frustration in her eyes. That's stupid. Naruto said crossing his arms. He still sat on the floor next to Yukari's bed. 
surprisingly the girl had remained asleep the entire time. She must have been a really heavy sleeper. I know. It's a terrible tradition. I've lost to many good friends to that stupid thing. Doya said, clearly frustrated now. What happens if they came back without killing alive? Without killing their target? He asked, standing up. Then they would be killed by someone truly close to them in the tribe. Doya explained. That's insane. What are you going to do now then? Naruto shouted out. What was it with this stupid world, and all this senseless killing? Granted back in his world there was killing, but now like this. At least not to G.I.'s knowledge. I really don't know. I'll repay you for this though. Doya said staring up at him. Naruto stood a whole head higher than the girl. Which made her a bit made. Repay me? Naruto asked confused. Yeah for saving me. What do you want food, money, clothes? Doya asked, putting her hands on her hips. You don't have to repay me. Naruto said with a smile. Shock filled the girl's face. Eh. Why not? There's no reason to. I was just doing what was right. Anyway you could stick around with me, Yukari, and Tetsumi. He said with a smile. Doya for the first time in her life was surprised. She had never met a person who would do such a selfless act like that. Oh yeah, and why should I? She asked, recovering from the small shock. Well honestly I really don't know. It's just a suggestion. Tatsumi wants to make it big here, to support his village, and I just want to make sure Yukari's safe. Naruto said, crossing his arms, and looking back at the sleeping Yukari. He had a small smile on his face. Why do you want to protect her so badly? You some kind of pervert or something blondie? Doya said with a smirk. Eh. Naruto shouted out. He may have been trained by a pervert, but he was no pervert. He thought to himself. Relax I'm just kidding, but I would like to know why. Doya said, sitting down on the edge of Yukari's bed. Naruto didn't know if he should tell her, but if he wanted her to trust him he had too. I made a promise to her, and her grandpa that I'd protect her no matter what. The blonde revealed to her. What happened to her grandpa? Doya asked, although she was pretty sure that she knew the answer already. He was killed by Imperial soldiers, because he was a sympathizer for this group called Night Raid. Naruto said. Her eyes quickly perked up at the mention of Night Raid. Oh Night Raid. I've heard of them. I was actually thinking about joining the group. She revealed with a smirk. Yeah. The idea's been bouncing around in my head too, but I have to worry about Yukari. Naruto said with a worried expression. He didn't want to put her in any more danger than she already had been. But something told him that in this world it wouldn't be possible. You'd be making a better world for her. I'm sure you've noticed the state of this place. Doya said, looking towards the window at the grey skyline of the city. Yeah I have. What's the problem with this place? Naruto asked. It's something that's been bothering him since he got here. Well, Doya began to say but was interrupted by the sound of their door opening, and closing very quickly, and violently. Naruto! Tatsumi shouted, as he ran into the room. The blonde was immediately put on alert, and reached for a kunai. Doya did the same, and reached for one of her pistols. Tatsumi what's wrong? Naruto shouted bringing his kunai to the ready. I lost all my money. Tatsumi shouted out, as he kneed into wine. Naruto's face went poker face, before realization set in, and his irritation level went through the roof. You did what? Naruto shouted out that instantly woke Yukari up from her sleep. Naruto wasn't angry by the fact that Tatsumi lost all of his money. He was angry at the fact that they no couldn't pay to stay the night at this ridiculously overpriced inn. I swear it's not my fault. Tatsumi began. Naruto couldn't wait to hear this. Doya was laughing slightly at the blonde's antics. Time skip, two hours later. The group was now walking across a small concrete bridge over a river. 
The sky had now turned to night, and they had nowhere to stay. Tatsumi had lost all his money he received from killing the danger beasts to a woman that promised him to get a high-ranking position in the military. But instead the women ran off with all his money, now Naruto didn't have enough money to pay for the night so they were now forced to sleep out on the streets tonight. Kurama had found them a little while ago, and smacked Tatsumi across the face calling him an idiot. At first Tatsumi freaked out because of the talking fox, but when Naruto explained it to him he calmed down. Oh well isn't this just great? Tatsumi shouted out, as he kicked a rock alongside the bridge. It's your own goddamn fault. Doya shouted out to him. She had laughed her ass off after Tatsumi told them the story of him losing the money. So she thought this was the perfect moment to pick up on him. Why are you even still here? Tatsumi shouted out. I'm simply repaying a debt back to Naruto, and besides you guys will probably need the best marksman in all of the North's help. She said with a smirk. Hey I don't want to hear it from you. You just woke up a few hours ago. I had to carry you around all day. Do you know how much you weigh? Tatsumi shouted back. What Tatsumi didn't know is that he had just jumped into a pit filled with vipers. Why you? Doya shouted out, as she began to chance him around the bridge, luckily for Tatsumi he was faster than her. Naruto simply stood leaned against the side of the bridge watching the two go at it. Yukari was to his side holding his hand. She had a bright smile on her face one that wasn't meant for this place. A moment later Naruto saw a fairly nice looking carriage pass by him. It stopped a second later, and a young girl who had short chest length blonde hair with a fluffy, blue hair accessory stepped out of it. She had an expensive looking blue, and white dress on. She approached Naruto with a smile. Um excuse me. She asked tapping Naruto on the shoulder. Kurama had instantly disappeared back into Naruto's seal, to make sure no one saw him. Yeah. Can I help you? The blonde asked turning to her. Um yes. Do you, and your friends have anywhere to stay tonight? She asked looking over to Tatsumi, and Doya. Doya currently had her pistol in the boy's face. Sadly no. Naruto said sighing. Her smile widened at this. Oh would you like to stay at my house? The girl simply stated. Tatsumi and Doya quickly took notice to the girl, and walked over. Ha. Huh. We don't have much money. Tatsumi said approaching her. You wouldn't be out here if you did. She said with a smile, turning to him. Tatsumi had to admit she was fairly cute. Doya on the other hand got an uneasy feeling from her. Give it a break Lady Arya can't leave helpless people like you alone. A man said as he stepped out of the carriage followed by another Naruto could tell that these were her bodyguards. She won't give up until she gets what she wants. The other bodyguard said shrugging his shoulders. So what do you say? The girl no as Arya asked Naruto. The blonde thought it over for a second. If it was just Tatsumi and Doya with him they could have easily slept outside, but he had Yukari to worry about. All right then. Naruto said nodding his head. Great. Arya said with a bigger smile than before. The group all rode inside Arya's rather large carriage all the way back to her house. The minute Naruto arrived he knew something was off. The smell and the look of this place didn't seem right. He needed to make sure to keep Yukari close at all times here. They all walked inside, and were ushered into a room with two adults. Naruto guessed that these were her parents. This place is gigantic. Tatsumi shouted out, much to Doya's annoyance. She was about to yell at him when an old-looking man approached the group. Oh my Arya brought some more people home again. How wonderful. The man said with a smile. He held out his hand to Naruto, and the blonde shook it. What a habit. It's a little late, but I think I could make it work. A lady said from the chair by a fireplace. The old man moved them into the room where they began to discuss why they came to be here. They were all now sitting in chairs surrounding the fireplace. Arya's family was on the left while Naruto's group was on the right. Yukari was sitting on Naruto's lap, humming a song. 
Tetsumi explained how he wanted to join the military and become a great general. Doya said he was only here because of Naruto, and Yukari was too shy to talk. So Naruto what do you wish to do? Arya's father asked the blonde. Nothing much really. Naruto said putting his hand behind his head and stared up at the ceiling. He needed to keep Yukari safe that was the one thing that always went through his head. Oh. You know if there's anything you need you can always come to me. The old man said with a smile. The smile made Naruto a bit uneasy. Also stay wary tonight. The women said with an uneasy expression. Why's that? Tetsumi asked with curiosity. There's a group called Night Raid lurking about in the capital lately. They've been targeting rich citizens for their money. The old man said, looking extremely worried. What? Really? Tatsumi asked with shock in his voice. He couldn't believe a group would do that. It made him sick to his stomach just thinking about it. Yes. Our neighbors were attacked and killed recently. This people want nothing more than our heads. So be on guard tonight. The old man warned the group. You got it. Tatsumi said with a confident smirk. HR could handle a few assassins. Of course. But also I would like to thank you for all your help. I don't know what we would have done if your daughter hadn't came along. Naruto said, as he shifted in his chair with a grateful smile. We're all helping each other. You do something nice for someone too. Aria's mother said, with another smile that made the blonde uneasy. Will do. Tatsumi said giving both of her parents a thumbs up. Naruto saw so much of himself in Tatsumi it wasn't even funny anymore. Will it's about time we head to bed. Arya can show you to your rooms. The man said getting up from his seat, followed by his wife. They soon exited the room, and left Naruto's group with Arya. Follow me please. Arya said getting up from her seat. The group followed the girl through her house until they reached a long hallway with multiple doors. Alright this one's for the girls, and that one's for the boys. Good night. Arya said walking back down the hallway, and towards a different part of the house. Naruto knelt down, and was eye level with Yukari. You going to be okay? He asked. Naruto didn't want to leave her alone especially not here. But he was a guest, and Pervy Sage always taught him to follow the owner's rules when he was a guest somewhere. I think so. Yukari said nodding head head. Alright if anything's wrong get Doya. I trust she'll help you. Naruto said getting up, and staring the blonde assassin directly in the eyes. You have my word Naruto. Doya said with determined expression. Good. I'm going to hold you to that. Good night. Naruto said walking away from their door to his. Doya nodded to Naruto. This reassured the blonde that Yukari would be fine. Good night. Yukari said, as Naruto closed the door to his. He smiled to her just before he closed it. Come on let's try, and get some sleep. Naruto told Tatsumi. The brown-haired warrior nodded in agreement. Little did they know their whole lives were about to change. Time skip, one hour later. Doya was currently sitting on the bed that Arya's family provided for her. She was quite grateful that the family had stopped to help them. If not then they would be sleeping outside. She turned to see Yukari asleep over on the far side of the room. The room was quite nice. A large window made up most of the far wall from the door. Beds flanked each side of the room. It's definitely one of the nicer places I've stayed in. Doya said, as she began to get up, and walked up to the window. A light knock was suddenly heard at her door. She quickly went to open it, and was met with Arya's mother staring at her with a smile. Oh you're Arya's mother can I, she wasn't able to finish her sentence before, and needle was dug into the side of her neck. A moment later she collapsed on the ground. I'm terrible sorry for this. Arya's mother said bowing, as two of her bodyguards stormed into the room. Ah. What did you do to me you bitch? Doya struggled to say, as she was beginning to lose consciousness. Again I'm sorry. 
Get the little girl. The women called out to her guards. Both of the men quickly obeyed, and walked over to the little girl. One of the bodyguards took out a needle, and plunged it into the little girl's neck. Her eyes immediately shot open filled with terror. She struggled for a second in the bed, but the man held her down, she soon became limp, and the man picked her up over his shoulder. Where do you want us to take them? One of the bodyguards asked, picking up the now unconscious Doya. Take them to the shed. I wish to have fun with them. The women laughed with a sinister smile, that even made the guards a bit unsure of her. She has been known to take guards that didn't listen to her orders, and kill them. These men did not want this to happen to them too. What about the other two? One of the guards stuttered out. My daughter will deal with them in a while. The women said, as her smile returned to normal. The guards complied, and took the two unconscious girls outside into the woods. Time skip, two hours later. The two lone bodyguards stood in the backyard of the large estate. They had been assigned to guard duty out back so now one would go into the shed deep in the woods. To find out the family's little secret. Man this sucks. One of the guards said leaning against the side of the estate. Tell me about it. The other said, lighting a cigarette, and staring out into the woods. Hey what do you think she's doing to them in there? The first one asked, staring in the woods as well. Honestly I don't want to know. The second said, taking the cigarette out of his mouth, and went to look up at the sky. The moon was an amazing blood red. Something that only happened a couple times during the year. Hey. Maybe when she's done with those three girls she'll let us have some fun with them. The first one said with a disgusting smile. Yeah. That would, the other guard couldn't finish before a large hand like claw grabbed him on his head, and slammed it into the building. Killing him on impact. Disgusting filth. Leon said, tossing the dead body aside. She turned to see the remaining guard staring at her with fear and shock. Monster. The man screamed out, as he tried to reach for his rifle. Leon beat him to it, and grabbed the rifle's barrel. The man looked up at her with fear in his eyes. Go straight to hell. Leon shouted out, as she plunged her fist straight into the man's chest. A second later she ripped out his heart, and threw him aside, as he entered the estate. Naruto, and Tatsumi instantly awoke to a massive amount of killing intent. They both got up from their beds, and immediately reached for their weapons. You can feel it too. Naruto asked looking over at him. Yeah. Something bad is going on. Tatsumi said narrowing his eyes at the door. We need to get to the girls. Naruto said. Tatsumi nodded his head in agreement before they flew out of the room sprinting towards the girls' room. The two burst into the girls' weapons at the ready. Yukari. Doya. Naruto shouted out in the empty room. His eyes widened in fear when realization hit him. Someone took the two. Naruto was beginning to panic, when he found whoever took Yukari he would tear them to pieces. The two looked around every inch of the room, but could not find the two. Where the hell did they go? Tatsumi asked, as they walked out of the room, and back into the hallway. Naruto noticed something out of the corner of his eye. He stared up out the window, and his eyes widened in shock. Look! Up there! Naruto shouted out pointing outside of the window. Tatsumi followed his finger, and when he saw what it lead to. He to filled with shock. Five people stood suspended in air on wires looking down at the estate. Guards immediately began to run out of the house towards the group of five. Those must be the people area's parents were talking about. Tatsumi said, gripping his sword with determination. He would not let these assassins hurt anyone else. Night Raid Naruto said out loud, staring up to the group with awe. So this is them. He thought to himself. I'm going to go find Arya. You find Yukari, and Doya. Tatsumi shouted out, as he began to run down the hallway towards an open window. Tatsumi wait. Naruto called out, but it was already too late. The warrior had already jumped out the window, and went sprinting in some random direction. 
Naruto knew there wasn't enough time to follow the boy. So instead Naruto closed his eyes for a moment, and an orange pigment filled above them. They shot open a second later. He had entered sage mode. He began to sense for Yukari and Doya's energy. After what seemed to be an eternity he finally found them but they weren't in good shape. Doya's life force was fading fast, and Yukari's was almost gone. No. Naruto said eyes filling with anger, tears, and rage. He had to reach her in time. He thought to himself, as he called out to Kurama. The fox quickly supplied the blonde with energy. Kurama was also quite angry for what he was sensing being done to Yukari. He would destroy this person. Kurama. Naruto yelled out at the top of his lungs as Ornage Nine-Tailed Fox Chakra began to swirl around him violently. Rip them to shreds. Kurama shouted out. Voice filled with rage. Naruto's body and uniform started to glow a bright yellow, as black lines appeared all over his body extending to his hands. A long orange and black Hayori appeared over his already glowing body. A pair of chakra horns appeared in his hair, Naruto's eyes turned to a dark orange, and chakra flames formed all around him. Multiple unknown symbols also appeared all over his body. Let's go! Naruto roared out, as he now had entered his Ninetales chakra mode. He began to sprint towards the far window with supernatural speed. Bullet had been busy killing the remaining guards when he noticed a rather large killing intent suddenly appear inside the estate. What the hell is this? Bullet stuttered out in his armor. Feeling the massive killing intent near them. In all his years he had never felt this much bloodlust from a person. She'll soon jumped down next to him and raised her ecstase in defense. I can feel it too. This doesn't feel right. She said with a worried expression, staring up to the estate. Mind see anything? Bullet called out to the girl. She sat above them in the back of the estate with Lubbock. No nothing. She said looking through the scope of her pumpkin. She kept scanning until she finally saw a bright orange light inside the building. Wait. What is that? She quickly panicked and prepared to fire her rifle. Whatever the thing was it was coming right at them. Bullet looked up to mine with a confused face. What are, he stopped dead in his tracks when he saw one of the windows to the estate burst open, and a glowing ornage figure jump out of it. Move! Naruto shouted out as he sprinted straight for Bullet. Bullet and Shield did not compile, and Bullet raised his spear up in defense. This made Naruto greatly frustrated. Why could people just listen to him for once? He asked himself. I don't have time for this. Naruto screamed out, as a ball of yellow chakra formed in each of his hands. She'll immediately charge the blonde with her ecstase ready to slice him into. Naruto was too focused on the man in the large armor to pay much attention to her. Although he did notice her fast approaching. But the blonde's hands were too preoccupied making two raisingans. He couldn't block the large scissors. I'm sorry. Shil said, as Ecstase made contact with Naruto's stomach. She waited for the familiar feeling of the blade slicing through flesh but it never came. Huh? She asked herself looking back. Her eyes widened in shock when she saw what happened to her taigu. It had harmlessly bounced off of the figure's stomach, and he continued to charge at Bullet with the two balls of energy in each hand. Impossible. She said out loud staring back at him. I'll give you one last change. Move. Naruto yelled out, as the Raisingans approached the man in the armor. No can do. Bullet said raising his spear to block the incoming attack. Naruto grinted his teeth as the Raisingans impacted onto the spear. The shockwave and force was so great from the collision that Bullet couldn't hold his ground. He was sent flying back into the woods. Bullet. Mine shouted out from above, as she watched him soar into the woods. All right you piece of trash prepare to die. Mine shouted out charging up her pumpkin. The figure paid her no attention, and began to run in the opposite direction. Hey where are you going? Get back here. Mine shouted out, her pumpkin was almost fully charged. 
Mine give it up. Lubbock sighed beside her. Eh? Mine asked, turning to him with a confused expression. If he wanted to fight us he wouldn't be running away. He has somewhere he needs to be. Lubbock said crossing his arms. Naruto continued to sprint at top speed through the woods closing in on Doya's and Yukari's life forces. Please be alright. He said to himself, as he sprinted through the forest. Naruto finally caught sight of a warehouse-like structure that their life forces were coming from. He saw Tatsumi standing defensively in front of Arya in a small clearing in front of the warehouse. A young girl with long black hair that reaches down to her knees and red eyes. Stood in front of Tatsumi with a sword ready to strike at Tatsumi. She wore a dark sleeveless mini dress with a white collar and a red tie. Tatsumi. The blonde shouted out, as he entered the clearing. He sprinted as fast as he could to the boy. Ha. Huh. Naruto. Tatsumi asked as he lowered his guard. Naruto. The black-haired girl asked, turning around to see the blonde sprinting towards her. Time stopped for her. It was the boy. The boy from her dream. He looked almost the exact same as he did in her dream. What the hell's going on? She thought to herself, as Naruto inched closer, and closer to her. Out of the way. Naruto screamed, as he instantly formed a Raisingan in his hand. Akame sidestepped, but she caught Naruto staring directly at her. His eyes were full of determination as he passed her. Naruto continued his full sprint towards the door, as Tatsumi pulled Arya out of the way. Naruto slammed his Rasengan straight into the large metal doors covering the warehouse. They instantly burst open, and Naruto sprinted in at full speed, eyes filled with rage. Yukari. Naruto yelled out, as he began to scan the warehouse. But when he saw what awaited for him in there he nearly threw up. Human bodies, and remains were scattered throughout the room. More bodies were laid out in cages along the edge of the warehouse. It looked like something out of a horror film. This place was a torture room. Once Naruto realized this his eyes got ten times wider in shock. No, Yukari. Naruto yelled out, trying to find her. He couldn't sense her, or Doya anymore. Damn it something must be distorting it. He thought to himself, not even wanting to think the worst had happened to them. Stay away from them. A feminine voice suddenly shouted out through the dimly lit warehouse. Tatsumi quickly ran inside just as the voice spoke out. His eyes immediately widened at this. He knew the owner of this voice. Seo. Tatsumi shouted out into the darkness. Tatsumi. The voice asked back. Where are you? Tatsumi yelled back, as he prepared to sprint farther into the warehouse. Over, the voice was cut short by a muffling sound. Seo. Tatsumi called out back into the darkness. But no response was giving. Naruto was too busy listening into the voice to locate the her, to get even more distressed. Over there. Naruto immediately yelled out pointing to the far left corner of the warehouse. The two immediately began sprinting into the warehouse passing all the horrors the family had left behind. Little did they know that a figure was following them in the shadows. The two kept sprinting through the warehouse until they came across a dimly lit area. One candle hanged above the room. Naruto looked under the light to see three figures strapped in chairs. The blonde immediately narrowed his eyes. Yukari, Doya, and another woman that he assumed was Seo were all strapped, and bleeding heavily in the chairs. Yukari looked up directly at Naruto. Her face was full of tears, and blood. Naruto. She cried out, trying to break out of the restraints. The sight made Naruto began to boil with rage, as he began to walk over to them. Don't come any closer. A voice shouted out of the shadows. Naruto immediately stopped in his tracks. Tatsumi brought his sword up in defense, just in case they would be attacked. Arya's mother soon came out of the darkness next to Yukari. She held a needle up to her neck, and pointed a gun over at Doya's head, who was currently unconscious. Get away from her. Naruto growled. 
as he was thinking of a way to get to Yukari. He couldn't use his Hiration no Jutsu, because his disappeared after one use. I'll kill them all. The mother spat out. She had an insane expression on her face, and a disgusting smile. Why are you doing this? Tetsumi shouted out. Why did these people do something as terrible as this? They seemed so nice. He thought to himself. It's simple. You're all cattle. None of you are worth anything. Your existence is a sin, and I will rid the world of you filth. She yelled back, with insane laughter, as she moved the needle to Yukari's neck. No Yukari. Naruto screamed out in rage, as he sprinted towards her at full speed. Arya's mother laughed insanely. Die, before she could finish a blade was struck right into her heart from behind. She looked back in horror to see the girl with long black hair staring at her with a neutral expression. Get away from her you disgusting filth. The girl said, as a weird pattern started to spread out all over Arya's mother's body. Arya's mother dropped dead a second later, and the girl ripped her sword out of the woman's body. Yukari. Naruto shouted out, as he ran towards the little girl. He ripped the restraints off of her, and held her in his arms. Kurama's chakra immediately began to spread over her protectively. It's okay I'm here. Naruto muttered to her, as he stroked her hair. Tatsumi quickly ran over, and began to get Seo down. Doya was still unconscious in her chair. Naruto. I it. Hurts. Yukari cried, as blood began to trickle out of her mouth. Naruto tried hard to hold his composure from the sight. She had a major gash across her stomach, and her left eye was so badly bruised that it was closed. Shu. It's okay. You'll be fine. I give you my word. Naruto said, holding her hand tightly. Green chakra began to form in his other hand. She doesn't have much time. Can you really save her? A voice said from behind the blonde. Ha. Huh. Naruto asked turning around to see the black-haired girl staring down at him with her big red eyes. He had to admit she looked really cute, but now wasn't the time to worry about that. Yes I can. Naruto said with a determined expression. Naruto. Yukari whispered weakly. Naruto immediately turned around, and faced her with a soft expression I'm here. Naruto said softly. I, I don't want to die. Yukari stuttered out, beginning to cry. Naruto knew the jutsu was done preparing. He had to use it immediately. Shosen jutsu. Naruto whispered out, as he placed his hands gently on her stomach. The moment his hand touched her stomach it glowed a bright green. The effects were almost immediate as the large wound in her stomach instantly closed up, and the swelling in her eye went down. The various cuts, and bruises disappeared as well. Yukari's skin soon turned back to a healthy pink. She passed out in the boy's arms, and Naruto let out a sigh of relief. Amazing Naruto. The girl said behind him as she watched the entire healing jutsu occur. Naruto looked back at her with a smile. Thanks, that's when realization hit him. Who was this girl? He asked himself, staring at her with confusion. Akane knew she had just slipped up, and was now trying to ignore his piercing stare. How do you know my name? The boy asked looking towards her with curiosity, and caution filling his eyes. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.